Woo! Showtime, gentlemen. <laughs> Let's do it. All Been right. invited to the first ever wine night. Wine night. What's funny is that we do this shit all the time. All the time. And Thomas is always honest, like y'all should record this because he sits there and asks us questions. Yep. And so uh, every now and then we we have wine night. So, let us uh, in the chat. Let us know. What the volume is like. If we need to turn it up a little bit. Let us know if you can hear us fine. Miami's loud, so you might hear an airplane or two. Yeah, we got we got planes flying over here every now and then. Yeah. It's good. So there were some questions that came in. We ran um we ran this on Instagram today. It said ask us anything. We knew we'd drink wine and answer some questions, so it'd be it'd be fun. Sterling, you want to start off with the first one, bro? Yeah, we got some fire questions from you good guys ones, on yeah. our IGs. Good ones, a lot. Turbo lighting, that's correct. Is correct, my friend. Turbo lighting. Turbo. I do love that word. And uh, hit the like button and like jazz. Yeah. And then buy some Bitcoin. <laughs> so the first question from uh, Benjamin is, oh, this is a good one. You're going to like this one. What do you do when your friends go for your ex-girlfriend and talk shit about, t- talk shit about you to other girls. Bro, that's not your friend. Next question. Next question. Fuck, that ain't your Next friend. Next question. That's not your friend. That's not your friend. Yeah, sorry. I, cut I'd that. love to give you something else. But cut that motherfucker around. Yeah. Cut him out. Oh, by the way, that includes undertones in person. Oh, bro, I was just kidding. No, fuck that. Yeah. No. Zero. You got to have that talk with them up front because sometimes they'll do it and they don't know they're doing it. No. So if you have the, the talk up front, then um, that kind of like you need to have all the rules and understanding. So. Yeah, like, you know, shit. like, that's a lot of dudes have this sort of self deprecating shit going yeah, on. And they do it, they, they think they can joke with you in front of a girl, though. It's, yeah, it's not, like, we don't, jo- we cute. never joke about each other in front of a girl, like, unless it's like, oh, you know, like a, yeah. a serious girl that's a bit around us and shit. Yeah, and I'm not even a big fan of that, actually, because that's a girl you actually care about. Exactly. So I'm not really even a huge but fan of making fun of a guy in front of his main shit. Never, ever do that. Yeah. Like, your yeah. your job around your boys should be purely to big each other up and make yeah. yourselves look like the shit. Because think about it this way, from her right. perspective, right? If she's coming into your group and you're, like, and you're putting your own friends down in front of her, yeah. what does that communicate to her? It communicates to her that you're hanging around with guys that you don't respect that much. But if you flip that shit on its head and you're constantly beating up your boys around her, she's like, oh, damn, this is a guy who actually surrounds himself with cool dudes. This is a group of men that I want to be a part of. And that's the, where the real power comes in, is, is creating this sort of environment of not just you and her, but like the whole group that she's going to join. It's super powerful. So. All right, I'll take one. Um, a more smike is the handle. I don't know how to actually pronounce that, but it says, may you describe the concept of our souls aligning in your interaction with Sterling and the Tates? Yeah, man, that's super simple. A lot of people grow up and they they feel out of place or not accepted by their family because they have certain views or ideas that might not line up with either traditional society or what they were brought up in their household. And I'm a big believer, like we just get issued a body. That's white, black, Christian, American, European, you know, anywhere. And I think that one of the most important things you can do in your life is find a group of people that really, truly align with you on morals, values, just what we just talked about. Like we take a lot of pride in like, being a good friend yeah being the guy that's pushing that girl you know like when sterling goes and takes a piss or something like you know who that is you know like really trying to amp each other up believing in the things that we actually believe in the dynamic between men and women the dynamic between time and money uh the dynamic between trying to create a scenario where we can move around with fluidity and have freedom so I, I think that finding people with the same morals and values is the most important thing you can ever do. And it really defines family in a true way. So if if you're not out there openly seeking to find people that are about what you're about in every category, you're selling yourself short, man, because they're out there in some way. Yeah. No matter no matter uh, honestly, no matter what you believe. 
So speaking, uh, speaking, of, speaking of brothers, <laughs> you know who this is? Let me see. You know who this is? Yeah. It's our friend. It's yeah, our, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, it's our yeah. Australian friend. Yeah, our boy. Our boy. You know what our plans up, are. Mate? You know what our plans are. <laughs> so <laughs> cheeky devil. All right. I'll, I'll see you off your kingdom. What's up, bro? Hey Affy, where are you? Where's Affy at? Where's Affy at? <laughs> where was his fire before? Salute. Yeah. Salute. There he is. Bang. There's his fires. Thank you, Affy. Good to see you in the chat, my man. Let's find another one of these questions we had in here. Uh this one. I like okay, I like this one's gonna be fun. It's gonna be interesting. All right. Justin. Let's this is a question from uh, Extreme 19. All right. On my IG. Rank the best nationalities of women to pursue for casual sex. He's not gonna like my answer, actually. Ooh, really? He's gonna super hate my answer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I'm well. Now I'm curious to hear your answer. Okay. So my answer is this, bro. If you're the right dude and you take care of all your shit, it doesn't particularly get harder anywhere I've ever been. Now, now I've been in close to ten countries now, fucking around with you guys. You've been in like twenty or thirty. Like 20 or 30. I, I feel like, I feel like, dude, I've been in almost every state in America. I've, I've been on like what multiple continents now, yeah. dude. If <laughs> if you're that dude, bro, <laughs> I, mean, I don't think it matters, especially in 2022. Look, so I'll, I, don't, I don't think there's a cheat code unless you go to like Asia. Maybe? Look, I'm gonna give you a different answer, a slightly different answer, because my because you you've started you only just started traveling this last 12 months. Yeah, but I can't tell the difference. Okay. But you like you've been like the shit, kind of like your whole life, right? Okay, right. but I but I think that's by choice and doing certain certain work, bro. which I agree. I'm no, and I'm, I'm not. Dis- I'm, I'm not for that. Not disagreeing with that. Yeah, I'm disagreeing with that. What I'm going to say is, there's going to be some guys watching this who haven't got their shit handled as well as you did at at their age, right? Yeah. So I guess having that. said that. And I was one of those, and I was one of those guys yeah. in my early twenties. I didn't know. So Sterling's Facebook is hilarious. <laughs> Don't go looking for Sterling's Facebook. It's <laughs> fucking bad. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, we're not bringing that up again. Yeah. <laughs> but I will up to, up to answer the question. It's not even up anymore. Uh, the question of oh, nationalities to pursue for casual sex. In my experience, when I was traveling the world backpacking in my early twenties, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brazilians, man, <laughs> super, super, super. Was they're very, they're very sexual in their in their energy. They're a very sexual culture. Making out is super easy, uh, especially around Carnival before Lent kicks in. Probably the easiest place in the world to like get laid. Uh, the other countries I've traveled to, I've been in a few places in in uh, in Europe when I was younger, uh-huh. not as easy. Not as, I'm going to say like Lithuania, not as easy to get laid there when I was in my early twenties, uh, Canada, America, a- any Western country. It's, it's just as easy. Like Canada, America, Australia, England, New Zealand. These places are basically culturally identical in terms of like m- male, female dynamics and like, how easy girls are to, to fuck on the first date, etc. So with, the, with those countries, I'd say it's it's the same thing. I know guys have had who've had a lot of success in Asia as well. At a young at a, as a young white guy, I've never done that. I've never, I don't have a thing for Asian chicks. So I've never been there and done that. But I know dudes who have. But yeah. in my experience, certain nationalities, South America and the West, South America. I'd say South America. If you're if you're a Westerner, South America is easier for you, and if you're a Westerner, Asia is going to be easier for you. I'll say that. I think that's a pretty good answer to your question. Uh, let's uh, let's answer some questions that are in this chat, and then we can go back to the IG chats. We right. go back. We can go back and forth. I want to give everyone who's live right now some uh, some love. Drink up. <laughs> drink up. I'm already drinking, baby. I'm already drinking. All right. Super chat here. Bang right. from Sean. McMillan for the five dollars. Thank you, sir. Sterling, your content is phenomenal. Seems like I remember you recommending a night before four raw egg drink. Uh, were there any other ingredients? Yes. <laughs> so the way I do it, this is my what I call my boner shake. So I would take this the the night before a scene. 
to make sure that I had like fucking rock hard boner the next day. Because what you're doing is you're giving your body basically a ton of cholesterol. So cholesterol is like the building block for the testosterone. It's literally the chemical building block for testosterone. So by eating a ton of cholesterol the night before, when you go to sleep, you go into REM sleep that night, that's when your body's actually building and creating testosterone while you're asleep. So you're giving it the ingredients it needs to make testosterone for the next day. So I'd slam, a, I'd slam four raw eggs, uh, a scoop of vanilla protein powder, and then water, shake it up, and it would taste like a milkshake to me. It tastes like a milkshake with the vanilla uh, protein powder in there. And then next morning, you take this, if everyone watching this, four eggs, ideally pasture-raised eggs. You can tell they're better because they're more dark in their color. They're more orange. That's a really good egg. That's kind of a good, a good quality egg. That, some vanilla protein powder, slam that tonight. I guarantee you tomorrow you're waking up with a fucking raging boner. Guarantee it. So that's the answer to your question there. Uh, Sean, thank you so much. And we have this little super chat here from Raphael Talks. Uh, how did your mindset change after joining the War Room uh, Greetings from Switzerland? Well, I met this motherfucker. <laughs> I met this guy. And I know I know what your answer is kind of, kind of going to be, like why you found the War yep. Room. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was similar to mine. Like I was, I was personally at this place where I was very alone. I was, I had maybe a, ha a couple of old friends who thought along the same lines as me in terms of well, worldview values, like Justin talked about before. And, but I wasn't living with them. I wasn't in proximity to them. And then I connected with Andrew and Tristan online before I even joined the war room and we got along and then I met them in person and I met this guy at the exact same time I met them in person. And uh, I kind of instantly knew Las Vegas. Yeah, Las Vegas, Las Vegas. And I kind of instantly knew that we were aligned. Yeah. And the more we hung out, the more we realized that. And it, it took us like you know, we yeah. hung out maybe three times before we decided to like just move in together. Yeah, I, I helped you build that set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then we're like, and I was coming for the Bitcoin conference to see another war room dude, and we were going to go to Bitcoin. And then we worked on the set. And then I'm like turning up. So yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, for me, I was yeah, man. You know what? I didn't have any problems with women really. I had taken care of my fitness, finances too. I had taken care of finances, and I kind of got to that point where there was there was you know I felt super alone. I wasn't getting invited to very many many uh, gender reveal parties. <laughs> so <laughs> me neither. Yeah, surprisingly. Man. So and I shouldn't be, in all fairness. <laughs> so uh, you know that's. <laughs> kind of what happened. Don't invite us to your potluck. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 invite us to a potluck. But yeah, man, I was just looking for people that align with me, so I I didn't have to feel so alone in my thoughts and my and and my values and what I thought was real. And I I felt like I was really angry at the world because not not angry because I was losing because I was definitely winning big. I was angry at the hypocrisy, and I wanted to be able to openly speak about that and be heard and, and go back and forth with people and you know, really, really look at the world for what it is, where it is, and, and kind of put it all in perspective in a way that I felt like was actually healthy and not bullshit. So the war room is a really, really great place for that for me. Yeah. Uh, and has been. So I actually, on that note of you not getting invited to a potluck, I have a question. Oh, you have a question. Right. Justin, this is from Earl, by the way. From Justin, Earl. on a scale of one to 10, how close do you think, how close is Sterling to being a man of God? Well, Earl, let me tell you, bro. If Sterling gets into the gates of heaven, it is an inside deal, bro. It's absolutely an inside deal. It's com it's a complete famoose. It's COVID. There's been some money under the table. There's been money transferred over the table in a, in a hidden crypto wallet to yeah. Christ himself. Yeah. Sterling is going to hell. So... Sorry, I don't mean to be so abrasive. You know, we love you. Earlier, but, yeah. Look, look, I'm converting to Islam. Inshallah, I'm I'm gonna convert yeah. to Islam. Uh, if you do convert to Islam, you do have a slight shot. Yeah, no, because I think I genuinely think I'm more suited to Islam than I am suited to Christianity. Because I like the idea of four wives. Well, that's the main one, right? Okay, that's that's <laughs> the one that's gonna get us all booted. 
mostly. You know, <laughs> hell's hot, son. <laughs> so it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there was one of your IGs. Let's go back to my IG. There was another really good one in here. Oh, this is an interesting one. It's a really interesting one. Okay. How, how would, from uh, H. Lewis on Instagram, how would you raise your daughter to not end up for the streets? Um, how would you raise your daughter to not end up for the streets, Justin? Well, I'd marry her after doing the war room. First, I would do that. I would do that. No, 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 no. At what age? At what age would you marry her? Off? 15? 12? <laughs> Seven? No. <laughs> uh, arrange that? No, she's already, you, you pre arrange it at that no, age. You pre arrange I, it when she's I young. And then it's, it's if, if I'm honestly answering this question, um, I, I, would, I would say what would be most important to me is for me to sit her down, create a scenario where I educated her enough to be able to take care of herself, but at the same time, really deeply explained to her and educated her on the true dynamic between men and women and made sure that she didn't buy the, you know, you're going to be a bad bitch and guys are going to like you. I, I think that women by and largely are oftentimes unhappy when they choose a path that is more like the path of a man thinking that's what a man wants when a man really just wants a woman that's, kind um good to be around loyal keeps herself in good condition and really fights for the man i i think if she understands that and has the skill sets that I'll, i would naturally teach her that's what i would want her to know and understand yeah. um and hopefully i've had a situation hopefully i would have a situation with her mother where she could see the benefits of that firsthand and so that's what's really important it's your job to set the example and for her to see it then when you explain it, it makes more sense. And she gets to see her mother winning in life and having an incredible life because of that understanding in, in that in that framework between the two uh, gender roles. Yeah, I think that's, I think I don't have any kids, yeah. you know, and so I, I'm just gonna speculate here, but I personally think that's the, the best example yeah. is the, 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 the example that the mother and the father set for her their daughter of where they're both in their traditional gender roles and they're not the mother isn't trying to you know right. one up him and and right and cuck him and right. fuck with him like right. the man's the head of the household and the woman's happy and the daughters can see the daughter can see this it's like okay this is a good archetype for me to aim for right because women will you like a woman's father is her first example of masculinity it's her first archetype for, a, yeah. for what an attractive man is, right? So we talk about women with daddy issues, right? Well, it's typically women who didn't have a strong father or had no father yeah. growing up at all, right? Yeah. So you are that example to her. And the second thing I'll say to that is enforcing boundaries on her, yeah. being being a, 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 a father who doesn't just let his daughter run around being a hoe, Right, enforces boundaries and shit. Enforce and, and more importantly, pays attention to the kind of girls she's hanging around with. Yeah. Because and I'll say this for like girls you date too. Like, who is she hanging out with? Yeah. Like, is uh, are your daughter's friends complete trash? Yeah. Well, then you should probably stop her from hanging around with them. Which yeah. surround her with positive influences, you know. And really, what you want to do there is explain to her what the outcome is. Yeah. You're not going to be able to tell her what to do. She's going to do it. Yeah. All you really want to do is set a good example and let her know how it's going to play out. For example, if you go sleeping with a bunch of men, putting your skin all over the internet, you are going to be framed this way. So a man like me, a man like dad, is yeah. not going to want you. Yeah. You're going to get this guy, yeah. which is douchebag, probably faking who he is, yep. not, not really a good dude, sleep with anything that he can get his hands on because he's desperate. Yep. You're not going to get a certain quality of man and live a certain quality kind of life. Because any man that is worth a damn is going to be able to see that you're whoring out on Instagram, you slept with multiple men, and he's just, he doesn't want to use car. He'll use you on a Tuesday night, but he's not going to purchase you. Yeah. So 
Um, I think that that's probably a, a later, like a conversation, early teens. Yeah, know, before once, puberty. That's a before you know puberty conversation. Because like you want to hit yeah. that, you want to you want to preempt that shit. Yeah, and that's getting earlier and earlier. But I, I think yeah. kind of planning those things along the way. Yeah, uh, because it is very important. Like if you're gonna have a daughter, man. Like look, I say this all the time. Guys don't like that I say this. But I don't give a fuck. Women are not bad. So I would love to see your daughter have a wonderful life. Yeah. Why wouldn't you, you know, want your daughter to have a wonderful you know, life? Women, women are not bad. I, I love the idea of helping a little girl find her way in the world yeah. and making sure she sets herself up in a way not not to be looked at as a piece of trash or a throwaway. Make, so, make sure that she's a good woman. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why wouldn't you want your daughter to end up happily married to some G? Yeah. Like, and then you know that your grandkids are going to be fucking the, the shit. Right. And that's why it's important that it's you just, set this it's frame. Excessive, yeah. You set the frame. I, I genuinely think women are most happy when a man takes control of the situation, acts with conviction, leads with conviction, and takes care of takes care of the one. Like she finds provision in that man. I don't think there's a problem with that. I also don't think it's simple. I don't think it's blue pill or anything. Because I didn't say nothing about not 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 sleeping with other women. I didn't say any of that <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? I didn't say any of that. I said, but I did say that be the man. Yeah. And she needs to, and she needs, if she earns that role as queen, then hopefully your daughter will be able to see that. Yeah. And if she's not, then she's shit, you know, and you shouldn't got her pregnant. So yeah. uh, let's jump in to some of these YouTube ones. Samuel Moore, thank you for the super chat. Thanks, bro. Uh, where in each of your lives does your bitch voice come in your head and sound the loudest? Uh, How to shut it up? Oof, man, for me, it comes with food. 100% comes with food. For me, it comes with eating like a piece of shit. Yeah. Hands down. He's seen it. He's seen it. <laughs> it's 100%. With me, it's food. Bro, yeah. and we'll be sitting here, like, watching 007 or something like that. It'll be, like, 9.30 at night. We just put the computers down. Yeah. And all of a sudden, three fucking boxes of pizza show up, like, this fucking big. <laughs> and I'm like, Sterling, bro, fuck you. You're not even going to eat all of that. <laughs> and, Ooh, I'm, whatever, and, mate. I, and I'm still thin. Yeah, I'm yeah, still yeah. on fat. <laughs> Yeah. I um, have the world's best genes. Literally the world's best genetics when it comes to not getting fat. It's true. It's and true. my brother doesn't. My, you've seen my brother. You've seen a photo yeah, of my brother. Yeah, my brother's yeah. a big, big man. Yeah. So somehow I I I got lucky there. But for me that's that's my bitch voice is like around food. And I need and I know what triggers it. I know there's like there's like steps that lead to the bad decision. So for me personally, I know I need to stop. I, it's not a case of me like having more willpower at this end. It's a case of like stopping it before the chain even starts, right? It's a case of like, okay, well, how about I don't drink a bottle of wine? <laughs> Unless it's wine we night. We made a pact. Today. Unless it's wine night. <laughs> yeah, and then I might pack. not eat some, some shit food later on. Right? We're going to order chicken later. Chicken. Shawarma. Yeah. Uh, how about you? What is, where does your butch voice most come up the loudest mine most comes up when i tell myself i'm going to start making a battle plan for the next day hmm. and then i like don't do it hmm. you know what i'm saying like i'm gonna i'm gonna make a battle plan soup the nuts from 5 a.m to 10 p.m tomorrow because i used to do that in my 20s a lot bro hmm. a lot but there there's something about I'm going to say not have to because I don't want to sound arrogant, but we had this conversation recently. It gets a little bit harder when you don't have to do things. Dude, yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I it gets hard, bro. <laughs> it's like. Today's been a great day. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah, do we do today? Yeah. You know, and, like, I'm, and my thing is, like, I don't, like, every day's Tuesday, right? So I don't particularly take days off, but sometimes I particularly do whatever the fuck I want to do. Like very literally, whatever I want to do. Yeah. And so, I think a part of that for me is that. But I, you had to earn that. I did. I, I, I don't. Did. I don't want anyone, anyone watching this to think they can just fuck off. You know, because you spent like fucking how a many, decade, a decade, a decade building a business. Yeah, I made eleven years. Last a year. real fucking yeah. grinding business. It is. It is. Right? right. So that's why now he can do that. Right. You can't, you couldn't, you can't do that from scratch. You gotta be a dickhead and fuck around from scratch. I told a young guy the other day that asked me a question. I said, the version you see of me today is a completely unrealistic expectation of what it took to get here. Exactly. 
and, and totally I, I different. Think that, yeah. I think that um, that's important to know. Um, my shit did take 10 years and it was very painful. It sucked. <laughs> and I would not do it again. Uh, but if, if I, if I'm being completely honest, I, I also think that I have a part of me that feels like it's got to suck a little bit to feel like I'm actually doing something. Mm, so, you know yeah, what I'm saying? That masochistic side yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for so long, yeah. for so long, it was so painful. And so it was like pain, 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 reward. Yeah. Now yeah, it's yeah. like reward, reward, reward. I'm still working really hard. Yeah. I'm there's just no doing pain. it different. I'm like there's not like taking less, the punches. There's less pain. Yeah. Yeah. There's not, yeah. So it's kind of weird after 10 years of just getting ass handed to you, just beat up, bang, 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 bang. Yep. To be able to make money and be like, hey, you know, get the report every day and be like, oh, well, that's that's really nice. <laughs> you know, it's a green line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's in the black. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? You know, and it's like, you know, I, everybody paid us. Like, oh. a building didn't fall down. Nobody felt, nobody cut themselves. Excellent. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, there's things like the systems worked. You know, like, it's that kind of stuff. So, um, I think um, just naturally, anytime you get comfortable, that voice will come up. And so it's really about like dividing whether or not that voice is right. And I think in the beginning, you should always listen to that voice. If that voice is telling you something, like you're, you're bitching out of something, then yeah. I think 99.99999% of the time, that voice is right because they call it the 1% for a reason. Only 1% of people really deserve to, to, to really say, you know what? Fuck that voice. Yeah. This is where I'm at. Yeah. And, and so, um, like that resistance is what you should be leaning into. Like whatever, whatever the bitch yeah, voice man. is talking about is actually what it, it's so your brain is actually really useful. And this is this idea of resistance. Uh, what's the book? The art, there's a book, the book's called the art of war, no, sorry, the war of art. That's the name of the book. I think it's Stephen Pressfield. He talks about this idea of resistance yeah. and like, Whatever you resist the most is actually the thing you should probably be doing yeah. the most. Like, yeah, yeah. It should be the top thing on your list because you'll put it off again and again and again and again. Because yeah, you don't want to confront it. Because you don't want to confront it. Because you, yeah. you know it'll take time and it'll take effort and, and yeah. intense focus and you're going to put it off. But that's actually the thing that should be the number one priority on a to-do list. Because you'll be like, oh, I can do that later. So I'm going to do these minutia bullshit that I think is I'm going to play entrepreneur. Or I'm going to pretend like it's important, yeah. but it actually doesn't move the needle in my business or whatever, or my, move the needle in my life. And so you're focusing on the wrong things. And so that 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 bitch voice, aka resistance, is actually a compass for you. It should. It's actually telling you where you should be focusing your time and your energy. It's super useful. So if you can lean into it that way. It's, you'd use it to your advantage. Yeah. All right. Let's go for one from your. Uh... Man, we we up here all night. We got we got a lot of questions, and I love this. This is great. Yeah, this First is wine night. First wine. Fucking woo! Y'all, cowboy. <laughs> What's the question? What do you got from you? Got one in your IG? Uh, let's see. Because I want to, I want to, I want to make sure that we the first few people who we got some really good questions on our Instagram at the very very beginning when we first posted the stories. So I want to make sure we hit some of those and then we're going to make sure we get through all of the super chats we have. We're not going to leave, we're not going to leave a single one. We've got all night. We ain't doing shit here in Miami on a Wednesday night, except yeah. drinking wine, but we might send Thomas to get us more wine. If we run out. Cause we, look, Thomas, that bottle, it ain't full. Time, bro. That bottle ain't full. You might have to get off the chat. And all right, get some wine. Here's one. This one's this one's to me. <laughs> I think directly, so I'll answer it. How important do you think it is to develop? And he puts in quotes: man skills, hunting, fishing, maintenance, etc. I like that, bro. With the way the economy is going, you better. There's a, there's an old song called "Country Boy Can't Survive." I can skin a buck and run a trot line. A country boy can't survive. <laughs> You might want to learn to plant something as well, dude. I don't know. Learn to grow. Look, man, I think that uh, I think that hunting is a part of life. I actually had somebody come at me recently, and Thomas, I think he deleted the comment because I was, I was about to fucking hammer this dude. So I shot this deer, post it, and uh, I'm going to eat off that deer all year. 
and you want grass fed that's it's fucking grass fed you know so i mean i think hunting and fishing uh are important things to do i also think they're, they're good for you i think that when they become an overwhelming hobby and you're not working i do think it's a problem i did not hunt very much between i graduated college at what, like 23 I didn't do much of it between 23 and 30 and honestly did not do man i've probably done more hunting and fishing in the last two or three years than than i have my whole life really um but i did it growing up a lot so i'll take that back so yeah i think i think that learning how to do that makes a lot of sense i think there's something very primal about it for a man um there's something like we were skinning deer the other day and i held the i held the deer's heart in my hands and there's something very primal about that and eating meat off of something you actually killed mm -hmm. uh anybody that thinks that's crude and i got news for you bro go to <laughs> a slaughtering house it's, it's way, that, that's the real world man it's a nature's metal bro no so uh yeah i caught what four or five i sent i sent you a video the other day it's a bass i caught out of a pond you know so yeah man i mean do i think it's zombie apocalypse you need to learn it i, I don't you know i'm not telling you to prep but i, th I think yeah man it's a great thing to learn Especially if you want some clean meat, do it. Do it. It's good for you. Skin a deer. Get guts and liver and everything down your down your wrist, man. Like cut cut an animal open. You know, it's uh, it's it's it gets you close to nature for sure. All right, John's on the way. Nice, John Ox. John Ox is coming. War room guys coming through. Woo! Uh, big nice. crypto guy. Big crypto guy. I invested 100k with him last year, and he made me money. So. He's, good dude. He, he, he's, about he's a good man partying and drinking in your mid-20s any advice to this age rank yeah bro don't do any of that shit i wouldn't do any of it i would only do money making activities in my 20s well first of all your 20s go by like that yeah you dude, you're gonna be done with your 20s like that i would uh i would build a business in my 20s especially if i didn't have any wife and kids yeah because it's like you're pushing all in on yourself you got nothing to lose you're like you're not letting anybody down if you fail yeah that's the thing like to I think a lot of guys will fuck themselves by getting a girl pregnant in their early 20s or teens. That's fucking retarded. I, I would not even get married. I'll never get married. Dude, like, 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 like now, like now, and I had this conversation on a date the other day, actually. Yeah. And it was like, what was his name? <laughs> One <Got him>. night. <laughs> One <laughs> night. <laughs> All right, you had a conversation on a date. But the point, the point was like, because I said to her, I was like, look, Women should be getting married at like in the in the early twenties, max late, late teens, max, right? Absolute max, yeah. I was laying the fucking heat, right? And she was like, they, oh. they get, they're down too. No, but he laid on conviction. As soon as I said this, she was super down. I said, Look. And she said, so she said, Well, what about men? Should men be doing that? I'm like, no. A man should not be getting like a woman pregnant and settling and, and wiping her up or whatever. Until and he can take care of three. Bingo! Until yeah, yeah, yeah. until he is in a financial position to yeah. look after his wife, his kids, his other wife, his other kids, yeah. and himself. Like until he's yeah. ready, yeah. he shouldn't be putting fucking babies in people. Yep. And so I'll tell I, you so thing, that's that's my stance on that. I agree with that, dude. I agree with that because that's also what's going to help him get the frame right, which tracks back to the other question: How are you going to get the frame right from your daughter? If if your wife doesn't know that you could replace her because fear equals respect equals love right not to bully her in that way no but she needs to be well aware and that's why i said three sets i'm not talking about three kids with one woman i'm talking about if you can't handle boom, three families boom, boom. yeah then i wouldn't have any bro yeah. that's like when they say you shouldn't buy a lambo unless you can buy three cash yeah 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 same thing I think brandon carter said that i think he did shout that. out to brandon carter Big shout who's out here in miami yeah where you at bro why aren't you on wine night dude this is keto wine Keto wine. No alcohol in here at all. Brandon Carter. Brandon. Psych. Um, if you, you want Brandon Carter on the wine night show, message Brandon Carter on Instagram. Right, blow his Instagram off. And say, go on wine night. With Justin and Sterling. Bang. <laughs> he's going to hate you all. Yeah, he's going to hate us. He's going to hate us. But it's even okay. better. He'll get over it. We love Brandon Carter. Um, thank you for the super chat. Wow, your channel grew so fast. I still remember being there. I remember you at the very beginning, Art. I do. Way when I was in my fucking apartment back in Los Angeles, which is a shithole, by the way. I hate Los Angeles. Yeah. I remember you in my super chat just for fun. I'm mainly paying so you can say Poon Yeti. Well, in that case, 
Poonyeti. Poonyeti. What the fuck is Poonyeti? I don't know. Right. Muhammad with a hundred dollars super chat. Hundred so bucks. Much. Thanks, G. Emperor Thanks Emperor Waller. Superman is fictional character, but a fictional character with a weakness. Boss, you the man, man. You don't have no weakness, but you do get the girls, the looks, the money, the skill, the high level of intelligence, and the best leadership at guns. The real one. Well, thank you very much, wow. Muhammad. Thanks, Muhammad. Thanks for the hundred bucks. That's a shout I out. Really, really appreciate that. Everybody has weakness, though, bro. Everyone. Everybody has weakness. It's somewhere. Anybody that tells you that they don't have a weakness is fucking lying to you, and you should be like suspicious. Or about even it. worse. They don't, they don't know. know what their weakness is. And they're like turbo narcissists. They're completely, yeah. and they're super ignorant to their own shortcomings. And that's an even worse. Yeah. Thing. So the most dangerous thing in business, I believe, is things that you don't know you don't know. Yeah. Yep. Um, for a person to, to truly believe they don't have a weakness, I think is super dangerous because there's something they don't know. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it's very important to pe for people to be self-reflective. I have super a lot of weaknesses, actually. I'm not a very good reader. I think I've said that on the show before. I failed sixth grade. I don't, like, if you were to give me a book and make me read in front of a bunch of people. And I say this so I can be helpful. Because a lot of guys, you know, they, they want to say they don't have any weaknesses. And I just don't think that's true. I think you'd be very successful and have weaknesses. If you can step out of yourself, outside of yourself, and, and I do this a lot. I step out of myself and I look at Justin and I say, okay, if I were going to hire or fire him from a position in my company, where would I put him and where would I remove him? And then I fire myself in a position to hire somebody. You know, you have to be able to step outside of yourself and look at yourself as a piece on the chessboard, man, and say, what are his strengths? What are his weaknesses? Uh, evaluate, do a SWOT analysis on yourself. And if you can't come to grips with the fact that you have a weakness somewhere, you're probably fucked, super fucked. And I wouldn't do business with anybody that can't identify a weakness they have. So food for thought. I really appreciate the compliment. Thanks for buying our wine. Uh, but I, def I definitely have chinks in my armor, man. You know, I've had, what, four or five shoulder surgeries? Yeah. It's a bitch. Yeah. You know, so I got weaknesses. Everyone knows. Yep. Yeah. But it's about, and it's, it's not even about, like, what Justin just said. He ain't trying to, like, fix his weaknesses either. No. And that's important. Because no, that's a great point. Though. Some people yeah. will... will Tell spend you, all their time trying they'll to They'll give that. you this shitty advice of like, oh, if you're bad at this, it, well, then work on it, work, work on, it, work. on it. Well, why would you work on something that doesn't come to you naturally instead of doubling down on your actual talents yep. and amplifying those? And then, like Justin said, find somebody else to slot into that position that. To, to compensate for your weaknesses. And I would add something to that. I would also focus on what you have an energy for. Because a lot of times people get talented at things that they had an energy for in the first place. Mm. So if they didn't have the energy for it, they won't go through the hard stuff of learning it mm. and getting good at it. Mm. Mm. So pay attention to what you have an energy for. I'll give you a great example in my business. I hate going through drawings and specs because in construction, spec books are like this thick. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. I'm like, I'm not going to read this spec book. And I don't like counting beans all day. I love reviewing an estimate though, because it's like looking at a deal. It's like, well, if we move the money here, we can make this much. You know, they're probably going to say we're expensive, but I could do this or say this after the fact. Bang, bang, bang. You know what I'm saying? So I look at it and I'm like, okay, I have energy for looking at the estimate in the end, but I don't have an energy at all for doing the actual estimate. It's boring. So is John coming? No. Okay. Thomas needs to get us more wine. Thanks, Thomas. <laughs> Oh, he's not oh lame. Okay. Take my ID. Tell, tell him for Justin <laughs> Sterling, bro. No, you look. We have the same guy. Give him our IDs. You look older. Yeah, he's not going to card you, though. Oh. oh, no, 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 no. I'll just do the app. Order the app. Oh, cool. So Give him my card back. 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 <laughs> Give him my. And he threw it. It's behind the couch. So back to what we were saying. Wait, what? <laughs> pay, attention, pay attention to the things you have energy for because a lot of times. You'll try to force yourself in a task that you have no energy for when you should just hire somebody to do it. It's, it's really important to um, really understand what you have energy for, what your talents are, what they're not. And um, generally, you'll, you'll do just fine with that. All right, Vin with a 9 Oh, that's a great question. Vin or Tara, thank you for the super chat. 
Wife is down for a three-way. What are the best practices to make it happen? Oh, we can talk about this at length. Do I, do I take the lead or let her pick best practices? How do I convince my wife to let me sleep around it if it wasn't in the original agreement? Okay, look. So she's down. That's two different questions. It's, it's kind of two different questions. But one but, kind of leads into the other. Yeah, so but you're saying, say, okay, so you're saying that the wife is down for a three-way. I am assuming that you and her have had this kind of discussion, right? Where she's she's keen on other girls. That's actually makes it much, much easier. If she's somewhat bi, that makes it way easier, right? Or maybe she's just keen on pleasing you by bringing another girl in the bedroom. Yeah. Either way, it's also a win, right? So personally, the way I do this, there's two different ways I do this. And he's seen me do this. <laughs> like a complete piece of shit. You are, you're a super piece of shit. <laughs> well, let's have a threesome with a girl. Girls? <laughs> Bro. The way I'm offended. Look, one of the ways that I've done it in the past is I've kind of preempted. So I have two different women, right? I have my main girl and I have another girl. Like some side hoe. That's funny you say that. That was going to be my answer. Right? And I, I, I do the same thing with both of them. Okay, I preempt both of them. I implant the idea in both of the heads, and I check for bisexuality with both a, girls. And that's a vetting process. It's a vetting process. Yes, right. I'm checking to see if they've ever had a threesome, or if they've ever been with a girl, Blonde or if they're brunettes. into girls. Yeah. Do like do they like blonde yeah. brunettes? Like, I'm checking this shit in advance, and then what I do is I invite my main girl around at like 7 p.m. and I say. I fuck her for like a little bit and I don't ejaculate. And then I'm like, hey, I've got a surprise for you. I invite the other girl around at like 8.30 p.m. And then she comes in. I strip her naked and I grab her hand. I'm like, I've got a surprise for you. And I walk her into the bedroom. And it's very important. Like, what he's saying is I have a surprise for you. It's very hard for somebody to come to you and be like, hey, I got you a gift. And then be like, fuck your gift. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of a, Tristan Tate Aikido there. Mm. Um, shout what out advice to would you give? Man, for me, I, I, I would have start off with the main chick thing. One thing that I would say about your wife and most all of women is this screams. If I were to translate your message, I would translate it to that guy's wife is fighting for position. Which is a good thing. Which is a wonderful thing. So kudos to you. That was number one. Oh, yeah. I thought you were trying to choose me. Oh, see, we're running out. Where's John? Thomas? Go get one. No, no, bro. you can't. I'm gonna order it right now. I'm gonna order. It. I'm gonna source it. Um, Don't worry. I'm gonna sort. I, I forgot. I got, I, got, Thomas is I got distracted by the Thomas is not old enough. Yeah. You dickhead. Nerd. Fucking nerd. So gain a year of life already. <laughs> Fuck so. So if I were to translate this, it basically says that guy's wife is fighting for, for position. So. Um, I have I have to give you credit there, man. That's absolutely incredible. So now there, there's a couple things I want to do. It tells me that you've already kind of dropped some of, some of the hints in, yeah. and um, I always compare dropping hints in to like threesome frame into doing therapy. Like day one, you take her back to ten degrees, just enough where it's un like almost uncomfortable, but it's not so much a risk you can blow it out, and then you let her go. And the next day you're like 15 degrees, just to the point, and you just let it go, like the subject. You gotta touch it. And then the next thing you know, like arms all the way back. But in this case, it looks like you've kind of done that. Now it's just kind of about, you know, really, really setting it up. One thing uh we we do, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into detail here, but we we have talked about dropping some some mad spells during sex. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a whole setup we do. You but. have a lot of pool. We just did a whole event, a worm event in Colombia uh, around uh, this whole this entire topic. This whole topic. And we have receipts. And hierarchy, <laughs> the whole thing. So we have we do have mad receipts on that. Yeah. And I, nobody can give these receipts other than, no no offense to anybody out there, but other than Tristan and Andrew Tate, I don't think anybody. But we're gonna, what we're going to do is we drop these the, next, the next time that Justin and I are uh, on the fresh and fit show right we are going to drop a video receipt a video yeah. which shows our receipts which yeah. should put the argument to rest 
Yeah, yeah, I don't think any, any I've never seen yeah. anyone anyone in the whole space drop a receipt Thanks, Miami bro Miami drop a receipt like we're gonna drop so no. stay tuned yeah and, and big sh- and big shout out to Tristan mm. for coming out yeah Tristan made it possible like and, if, and, if Tristan wasn't there yeah it was mad uh, I mean he taught us a wrangle yeah, Tr- before, Tristan but. told us a whole bunch of We're shit. We're going to digress. But back but back to the subject, man, I think there's things you can do. Um, I think that you need to take the lead, though. I don't, yes, I don't think you yes. need to put it in her hands. Don't put, do not put it in her Okay, I'm going to jump in real quick. Yeah. So here's, here's why, in the previous, in the example I just gave, here's why I have one girl here and I bring the other one in and I don't tell them that it's happening. Yeah, because they'll back out. Bingo. Yeah. Because here's what she's going to do. She's going to be like, oh, my hair's not right. Oh, I feel bloated. Oh, I think my period's coming on. Oh, And it's not because she's not keen. It's because she's self-conscious. Because women get super self-conscious when they're naked with other women. So she is going to make a a billion excuses about, oh, because of her, purely because of her, of her insecurities, not because she doesn't actually want to go through with it. Right. It's just her insecurities coming in. So you, as the man, need to be the one to step in and negate that shit by just leading her through the. You got to do that shit with full, like grab throat conviction. Like, uh, like there's not there's not like a question. No. Like, like I had one recently. Like it was like I already had one. It's like you here, come boom. here, let's go, bang. And so it's like boom. Ooh, when, you, when you do it with the kind of balls, gotta come with conviction, the bro. balls and the conviction, yeah. they just fucking follow, man. Like you're not. You got to take the lead on. She's already she's already confirmed it, yeah, dude. Yeah. It, There's no wavering. There's no yeah, wavering. Yeah. Total don't, don't unwavering bubble. confidence. There was a second question though. Do you take the lead or best practices? Yeah, bro. Completely take the lead. More booze, booze, booze. You know. Um, it'll just it'll make them feel better. Yeah, like yeah. Ha- have have wine or or champagne or, or whatever. Yeah, don't roof me. Don't 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 do any rape, rape, don't do any rape shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? But like at the same time, man, have like it, make it fun. It's a fun girl, uh, music girl, playing. Girls just want to have fun. Man, do boom boom. Let them be in yeah. the same room and then just just dominate. And then the okay, and then how do I like how do I convince my wife to let me sleep around, dude? Like if you do the threesome. Ta-da! She knows you're fucking other chicks. Uh, here's how. Here's how. Here, and here's another thing that'll help you with a threesome. What she really wants is position. So what you should say is yeah. like, baby, we're going to sleep with her and then throw her away like a piece of trash. Yes. You frame it that way. You got to frame it that way. As right? long as she knows she's the queen and the queen forever and you'll never leave, then hoes are just hoes, man. And here's the thing. Like, during the threesome, I'm going to – some advice during that actual threesome with your wife and another chick – you need to pay more about make sure at least like 60 to 70 percent of the time you're focusing on your wife and the rest is on the side bitch yeah of your personal dick attention those two can do whatever the fuck they like and you should make it let them let it be about them by the way let them have their let fun. them do their thing and then you the dick comes in and it's just yeah if the is a if two girls are like having sex and there's a dick magically there, they're gonna suck it. You know what you're gonna find out, bro? <laughs> I hope this happens. Please message, please message me on Instagram when this happens. <laughs> you're gonna find out that threesomes are not that awesome. It's a lot of fucking work. I I completely disagree with you. The logistics are dude. Like, you're like, I, you're I like, will bro, disagree this, with you on a thousand uh, percent. Uh, no, uh, no, no. Shut up. All right, you have you have this opinion. Tr- Andrew has his opinion. No, that's not as good, uh, bro. No. This, okay. I, I can, mean, it's, it's good. This, I will go to my grave arguing with you on this. I don't know. Bro. I, I fucking know. love threesomes because I get more energy from them. Maybe. If there's two bitches there, my dick's twice as hard and he's ready to go twice as long. Uh, and I, 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 and I, I like... I okay. like the back and forth. Okay, I'll, def- I'll defend you. I like I'll, the changing. I, I will defend you uh, one little bit on this point. But it's not because it's not because I'm that much more aroused. It's because I'm like, ooh, I pulled this off again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, I did. I, I pulled this off again. <laughs> it's more of that, bro. My dick's harder. Like, like I'm just high on me at that point. I'm like, look at you, Jay. 
<laughs> it's an ego thing. Yeah. That's why I, I mean, but, but there's nothing wrong you do it. Like, it, it is fun. Like, it is sex. Super it, fun. It, okay, okay. I might be wrong about this. <laughs> it is tight. It's so much but fun. But I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you that good sex with one woman it is super good. And I think it's, I think it is a comparable argument to say that a threesome with some two ratchet hoes versus. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. But. But a threesome with two girls who are genuinely into genuinely each other into the situation, who yeah, genuinely like, desire each other and genuinely desire you. I Ooh. think I think what's more important is like the, when they want to please you. They're, yes. doing, they're doing it for you. And yes. they're getting aroused. Yeah, they because they want to please dad. Because they're having interaction with another woman to please you. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's what I'm, I'm, like, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I'll speak to that. That is pretty bad. Boys. So I'm talking about it. This is, what, this is my point. I'm not, I, I don't want some ratchet fucking hoe threesome. I want my main chick and another chick who's like try, vying for position yeah, yeah, to be in the thing. Yeah. So it's a fucking fun experience. Yeah. We, I'm not promoting passing on. Yeah, for, yeah. for sure. We, we, Even if it's two ratchet okay. girls, like if you we don't nailed, know, we've I, nailed this question. Yeah, this is this, we beat this, this question one to death. To death. Good luck, bro. Thank Message you. me. Thank when you. It happens. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, Thank you for the super chat. Love your content, Justin. I'm a I'm a second year construction. Management student in Houston. I was in Houston yesterday. Also on HU2 member, what was the first step you took towards starting your contracting business? Yeah, so uh, if you're in Texas, that you don't have to do this. But my first step was to apply for my contractor's license. Louisiana makes you have to have a state contractor's license uh, for any project over fifty thousand dollars. That's labor and material included. So I had to do that part first. Uh, I didn't have the money, so what I did is. Um, I was working uh, road work and for a company called uh, Cajun. So between those two jobs, I saved the money and I just went to the bank and I was like, look, this is how much my check is. I want you all to draft 80% of it into this other account so I can show a net worth of $10,000, which I did not have at that age. And I did that. I took the test. And then from there, I had to, you know, I had to make a decision whether to go the general contracting route, whether to try to build houses are whether to do trade construction and i grew up uh doing metal buildings as a redheaded stepchild so i chose steel and um and that was 11 years ago in march just uh mm -hmm. actually this month on the 11th we made 11 years so uh if i were you i'd learn everything i can at the company you're at uh, or where you're in school um second year construction management student in houston yeah so i would i would get an internship or a job Dude, I'd work for free if I were you. Internship, right? Yeah, I'd do an internship. They're going to pay you shit. You're not going to learn. I mean, you're going to learn a lot more. Learn. Than you ever will in school. Yeah. Yeah. On the job yeah. is way better than being in school. Or you know what else I would do? I would go find a small GC, general contractor, and just work for them for free or something. You know, like, because really, what the, this is going to suck from, like, a lot of the money's made in the office, man. If you understand contract, contract structure, schedule of values, how subcontracts work, liquidated damage, and you see it in real life. Like what you learn in school versus how it goes down in real life on the jobs is not the same, man. <laughs> you know, so for you to get some experience seeing seeing job sites, uh, being in subcontractor meetings at, with general contractors, it, it would help you out a lot. So I would I would go get real life experience and understand that 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 piece of paper is a technicality for you to work for a company in Dallas. And if you want to have your own business, then it's really not worth anything because my construction management degree actually i don't even know where the fuck it is but i, I have it <laughs> i just don't i think it i think it's in my employee folder in my office so i hope that helps and if, I, if i'm going to chime in slightly on this like yeah. justin obviously has a lot more experience in like managing people in a business than i do but i have run businesses in the past <laughs> and i used to go to university with guys who did business management degrees yeah. none of them are actually running a business I've ran three, right? I know more about running a business. I guarantee you I know more than they do. Zero doubt. Because I've actually put skin in the game. And that's the important part is like actually putting, yeah. jumping in and getting skin in the game. Yeah. You'll learn. The real world will teach you a lot more than any university or degree. real money online, bro. Because real, real skin yeah. in the game. Yeah, you're never going to pay attention more. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, that's sure. what I'll say. <clears throat> okay. 
<laughs> from tactical expeditions. Sterling is a virgin and Justin isn't a real cowboy. Friendship circle for the win. <laughs> All I can say is that I like you. I don't know. <laughs> God damn, that's a lot of... Oh, that's a AED. Oh, bro, is that our boys from uh, Dubai? That's Jewel. That's Jewel. That is Jewel? That's Jewel. Ah. <laughs> He dropped it in the friendship circle a minute ago. Oh, shit. <laughs> saw it coming. You saw it. Did you saw it? <laughs> I didn't see it. I'm like, I know that name. <laughs> For anybody that doesn't know, what Jewel. A dickhead. Jewel. Jewel's a dickhead for a start. Jewel is one of the most amazing human beings you'll ever meet. No, he's not. He's a complete cunt. Fuck, yeah. fuck Jewel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, know why, you know why I love you. <laughs> yeah, Jewel, Jewel is... Uh... Jewel loves minties. Let's just say that. And Jewel I think minties loves. taste like shit. I also think minties taste like shit. Not Jewel, gonna lie. Jewel, but Jewel loves minties. Jewel so. snorts Vegemite for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and Jewel is the most uh, dangerous man you don't know. That is absolutely the case. And he is also he's also rich as fuck because he sent us a bunch of money. What are you almost? <laughs> <laughs> he's also more Islamic than most Muslims. Yeah. Do you know, Jewel is the one that really taught me the word Haram. Yeah, Jewel made us the word, know the word Haram and understand it on a deep, deep level, the word Haram. So, also, big shout out to Jewel. Jewel runs an incredible event called Penetrating the Elite, which is a war room ex uh, only event. You were two events. You cannot get to without Jewel. Let me tell you something, what Jewel did for my style. You see these loafers? Mm. You, see, you see this Wimbledon? That's all Jewel, man. Jewel, Jewel has a way of, of, about... In the, in the penetrating elite summit, yep. war room only summit, where you learn how to really break through and network with high high net worth individuals, where you learn how to act the right way, dress the right way. There's actually a way yep. to signal to other high net worth in, individuals that you are in their class. There's so, a uniform. Yeah, there, there's what he call what he calls the rich man's uniform. Yep. There's a lot there's a lot to learn in his, in, in his course penetrating the elite. And then in addition to that, he runs a, a course called Operator. We won't talk about that too much. Which is real life. How to become a badass. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, war room only. If you're interested, DM us. We'll get you in contact with Jewel. You do have to join the war room first, so we can help you through that process. But if you if you're inter interested in networking on a high level. And then how to be James Bond in real life. There is no person on Literally, this planet that no is better. more James Bond in real life <laughs> than, than our than our man Jewel. So Let's go right here. um if you're interested in that, please let us know. We'll help you get that hooked up. He's not an easy guy to get in touch with, but yeah. we, we, we might know a little bit about getting in touch with him. So <laughs> uh, we'll do that. All right, asshole. <laughs> Dickhead. Uh, <laughs> Tom M, thank you. Thanks, fellas. Really appreciate you two. Have to admit, what you guys do is priceless, Sterling. Fellow Aussie here. Thank you very much, Bill. Nice, Cheers man. to you, Paul. Cheers to you, mate. Yeah, Cheers. man. Cheers. Please get out of Prison Island. Please leave. Like, get out. If you actually want to live a life worth living. Thanks, Tom. All right. Uh... <laughs> People are laughing at <laughs> Jules' comment. Cool. Go to the West. Current Hustles University student, I plan to join the war room when I get my copy running career rolling. As a guy who grew up in a single mother household, I hope to one day prove myself among QGs. Well, look, man, look, if you're in HU, you're, on a, you're already on the path. And coming from, you know, that background, it's not a great one. But you're making it work. Make it work. Yeah, man. And I also say don't, don't, um, don't attach that that upbringing to your identity. No, it's just some shit that happened, bro. Like I didn't have much of a dad around either. Mm. So, like, one thing that's really important is that you make for certain that your outcome in life has no attachment to that ident identity. I think at least two members of the friendship circle had that kind of upbringing, mm -hmm. and I actually think it's me and Jewel. And I just think it's super, super, super important that that's not a part of who you are. It's just the circumstantial thing that you overcame. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like in a movie where something bad happens to you and you won despite that thing. Just make mm -hmm. sure you stay the hero on your own show, bro. 
you know, that single mom shit, that's that's common as fuck, bro. Be the guy that beats it. Yeah, exactly, man. Because like, there's so many examples in the world of like yeah. somebody who was this. So make it just make it something that you're proud of overcoming. I just because I noticed that you mentioned it, you know, it's yeah. important. I guarantee there's someone who has who was in a worse position than you. Yeah. Who's accomplished more. Right. Yeah. So don't take that and use that to your advantage. Make sure you, un so you understand that. Oh, yeah. well then that means that I can do better. Right. If I don't make excuses, I can accomplish even greater things. I know. Wind me. Let's do it. Are we out? No. <sighs> Dude, I hate to have to cut this show off because we ran out of wine. Well, Who's I, in Miami? Bring me some. Bring us some wine. Whoever is in the area, bring us some Malbec. Look, I've got. I told John, and I've got saucy on the way, dude. I'm telling you right now, the guy will let you buy wine, bro. We're being retarded. Just go and don't, and, and like, try it. Talk. Buy it with conviction, bro. Try it. Do the threesome method with conviction. With wine. Conviction. <laughs> in fact, bring, give, bring, give him your bring, ID. Bring my uh, all my IDs. Bring my Mex Take my Mexican ID. And sound Mexican. Yeah. No, just tell the truth. No, because it's fact. Dude, just hand them the fucking card, bro. What kind of wine? Malbec. Malbec. I hate Malbec. Definitely I'm, red. I'm a cab guy. Yeah, red. red. Definitely some guy. red, but preferably Malbec. Sterling drinks <laughs> white wine in private. No, I fucking do not. <laughs> I don't drink goon. You, you ever had goon? Next question. You ever had box wine? Yeah, bro. At every whoopies house on the planet. Oh boy. Netflix. <gasps> All right. Box Miguel. Wine, live, laugh, love. Miguel V. All right. Now Thomas is gone. Get real. Lame. <laughs> Miguel V. What's the best strategy to beat women in Miami? I'm 25, making great money in a family business, but recently moved to the area with no connections here. Well, we did the exact same thing, my friend. So welcome to our world. Personally, like, <laughs> I'm going to uh, look. Personally, I shouldn't even say this. I really shouldn't even give away the secret sauce. <laughs> I should. But personally, dude, here in Miami, Hinge. Hinge I don't, is where the hot girls are, man. Bro, I love Hinge. you, bro. I don't, I don't think we said anything like super, like, no, super top secret there, bro. Tristan didn't know that. Bro, just Tristan get, had no idea. Bro, just get on the dating apps, bro. No, it's but, but dating app, I would say the girls hinge, are shit. Hinge the girls are shit. No, but the but hinge has the better ones. They have prettier ones. The, the hot ones, the nicer ones, the more down to earth ones. Maybe, maybe, like, maybe slightly. Yeah, man. But you know the deal. You know what to do. Get on dating apps, man. Like, I don't know. It's, it's just what I would do. If it's what I would yeah, do. Yeah, really. get on that. And and okay. look, if you want to go out, come to fucking Winwood, man. There's so, all the girls go out in Winwood. The Latina bars, a couple of really nice mm -hmm. bars here in Wynwood. Yeah. Where all the Latin girls go. Find some like Cuban clubs. Find some nice Cuban girls. Dude, yeah. I tell you, I tell you what I would do. I would drop my pin in uh, like um, Little Havana. Hi Leah. Hi Leah. Drop your pin. Like Don't drop your shit. Don't drop your shit, in, asshole. Don't drop your shit in Brickle, bro. Mm -hmm. You know. Don't drop it in Miami, Miami. Mm -hmm. Drop it right outside. So those because, neighborhoods outside because yeah. Miami, the city itself, it's like an all-star team of like sugar babies. Ex explain that concept to me, to guys, because that's important. I think. Yeah, bro. Like, so, like, so Brickle, Brickle is like Brickle the, is the girls on scholarship, high-end area. Yeah. So we live in Midtown. So we believe. That tell them where we live. <laughs> what y'all gonna do? Y'all gonna come steal them from me? You gonna steal them from me, we G? We tell them where we live. We leave, yeah. like, we leave our door open. They can yeah, come in anytime. Don't care. Uh, so. <laughs> Get it, cowboy. Woo. So look, here's the thing, man. Like, girl, girls in Brickle are on scholarship. More Meaning than, they, they have they, a sugar daddy. They have a sugar daddy. Already. If if they're in Midtown or like any area that's like super, super close to Brickle, they're just they're just waiting, they're just waiting on the call from Triple A, bro. Hi Leah, yeah. Coral Gables. Yeah, all that stuff. Like, yeah, but, so, but, these places. but here's the thing, and this is really important because I, I say this a lot. There are good women. There are good women. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the major metropolitan cities like the L.A., Miami, New York City. Yeah, maybe maybe those girls are a little bit more superficial, but there's really good women in America. bro. Mm -hmm. You can find the right woman. And I also think you can find her in Florida. You might not find her in the heart of Brickle. But if she's already in Brickle, bro, she knows the deal. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't, I don't think that uh, it's going to be hard for you to find girls at all as long as your shit's together. And that's why I constantly, 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 I'm like, listen, quit blaming it on the women. Yeah. You take care of your shit as a guy, and women will like. I get the best version of every woman I'm around because of how I choose to act, how I choose to take care of certain things, and it's not because I'm tall. It's it's because <laughs> you, you understand what I'm yeah, saying. No, it's it's like funny, I, bro. I get the same thing. And I'm yeah. taller than you. Yeah, it ain't. It ain't. It's hot. Tristan's the same way, bro. It look if Tristan if Tristan Tate was 250 pounds, n- not rich, not charming, not educated. You think you'd be able to sit down with a girl and talk about the history of war in Europe and economics and how it affected that girl's particular lineage mm. in that country? And, and he impresses. I've watched him do it. Mm-hmm. Just impress the hell out of a girl. Oh, you're mm-hmm. from this country. Mm-hmm. Oh well, you know what? I think it's crazy that Joe's leader is like this because thirty years ago he said he said <laughs> this, this, this. The next thing you know, she's like, oh, you know, you're like, oh, Tristan Tate, Tristan Tate. Oh, oh, he's, oh, he's tall. He's, oh, he's six foot three. Oh, oh, oh he's off. six foot. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> Call me a fucking ripper, bro. So, I, <laughs> look, man, I got my start rocking trailers. So, <laughs> In Louisiana, yeehaw! All right. Moon pilled rational ganger. That's a hell of a name, That's bro. A good name, thank you. Uh, reading sovereign individual now. I read that book. Uh, interesting. Want to nice. goal set another forty plus books this year, like in 2020, 2021. Any recommendations? Crypto go, crypto guy as well. Okay, I'm gonna give you some great my personal book yeah. recommendations. <sighs> uh, the Primal Blueprint by Mark Sisson. My one of my favorites. Uh, on top of that, the Ultramind Solution by Dr. Mark Hyman, and then the third one would be uh, Unconventional Medicine. Those three books. If you read those three books, you will know more about nutrition and health and how to stay fit, how to stay jacked, how to prevent any kind of bad health issues than ninety nine point nine percent of the human population those three books alone don't be a pussy nope down it down it bro all right cool um i look i read a book a month in my 20s e-myth mm, mm, uh, mm, from mm, business mm, uh, mm. all of patrick lencioni's books death by meeting ideal team player you know five dysfunctions of a team uh there's one more about being a ceo i I've read Hello? Traction, Rocket Fuel. We run the OS in my business. Uh, you can read all these books, man, but I don't think they're I don't think they're a good idea for goals. I don't think you should have a goal to do it. I think absorb you should, them. You should absorb the books. And and one thing I do, if I go to a, a conference or if, if I go to a conference or read a book, I'm looking for the one thing. Yeah. One thing that's gonna make me a million dollars yeah. one day. Because most books are filler, man. Most books are massive. super filler. So full of Dude, filler. The, fir- the first third of the book is them telling you why you should read the book. Yeah, it's, it's then trash. The, then the middle part is like the guts. And then the last part is like just concluding and leading you to the next book. So what, what I do is I, I like to listen to books on like Audible and read them while I'm yeah. driving. Because you'll remember stories. And stories in books are actually typically... The yeah. thing that communicates the most important part of the book. So if you listen to the books on Audible when you're driving, yeah. you'll get most of the information. If it's if it's actually important, valuable information, it'll have some kind of important story attached to it, and you'll remember the story because humans remember stories. Another thing I would advise for a long time, I had a subscription to an app called Blinkist. Blinkist actually, re- they, they read the books, and they take all the important points out of the mm. book, and then they they basically cut it down to like 20 minutes. Um, one mistake I think I could have made in my 20s is that I read the duration of too many books mm. and it cost me time because what would happen is I would like mentally masturbate to thinking like I was getting smarter. Oh, I'm working. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I'm yeah, listening because I'm, to I'm a listening book or reading a book. book. So No, you're not. Yeah, you're not. I would. You're not. One thing that's really super important to pay attention to is what I call money making activities. And I've never made money reading a book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And I make sure my people yep. are doing money making activities. Like if I come in my office and like the girls are like got all the filing cabinets pulled out all over the floor because they think they're going to be more organized. I'm like, 
Put that shit the fuck up. Oh, but Justin's going to be warm. I don't give a fuck. Throw it in a garbage can if you want. Put it in a plastic bag in here. Like, mm. bang the phones. Like, let's right. sell some fucking, let's, hey, let's sell right. some fucking steel, bro. Right. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to sit here and, like, feel good about organizing a goddamn filing cabinet or reading a book. <laughs> so, uh, that's how I feel about it, man. I would never make my goal to read a certain amount of books. Let me tell you how I, I use information. Books and seminars. You grow. Oh man! I knew he wouldn't card your ass. Woo! Comes so, through with the win. Underage. <laughs> Give it here. Sterling's going to help. So, <laughs> what I would do, and this is how I, I would advise doing it: grow your business Woo. or your situation <laughs> to a certain problem, Follow and me. then when you get to that problem, read a book on how to fix it, yeah. or listen to a book summary on how to fix it. Follow me. It's in my hand, asshole. I'm gonna open it. So uh, don't <laughs> make your goals books. The podcast it. has been saved by Thomas. If, if your goal, if your goals don't include a fucking number, drunk ass. If your goals, <laughs> if your if your goals don't include a fucking number, they're not goals, brother. Shit. So money, money making activities only, and uh, try that Blinkist app or do YouTube book summaries. Those guys are generally good. They do the like, they do the drawings and shit. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> This poll in the chat has this has this podcast progressively gotten more intelligent or less intelligent the more wine we've drunk. I think it's gotten more intelligent. I don't even give a shit. I, 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 completely agree I think we're getting way more valuable information from us as we become more inebriated. Well, and, but it's important for you guys to see the real side of us too, bro. Like, this like, is this is this is literally what we do like at least once a week, yeah. at least. Yeah. <laughs> like we just sit around, have a wine, have a fucking good time, joke yeah. around, and discuss this kind of stuff. And you're now part of it. Part of it, dude. That's the point. This is our apartment. This is literally where we live. It's yeah. our couch, our view, right? It's Miami behind us. Yeah. So we wanted to incu- include everybody in this and make sure because we can't answer like. All the questions we get on a on, every, on a daily, daily fucking basis, basis yeah, man, it's so it's so hard for us to answer every single question we get. And do. a lot of them are repetitive. Yeah. So if we answer if we answer a question for one guy, like I it answers like a hundred guys. Yeah. It does. Right. Yeah. So n- now we have a chance to like actually get this information across. You know? What's the next question? <laughs> Let's go. I'm not also, I'm not one, one quick point: the sovereign individual. I read that book. In my early twenties, because of my mentor Simon Black, he highly recommends it. So I'm just gonna give a shout out there. Yeah. So thank you. Okay, Ghost of the West. And again, this stream could be the start of something special. Oh, what do you love the dynamic, dynamic you two bring in terms of streaming? Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. talked about that. Yeah, we talked about it a lot. Yeah. Sterling, Sterling didn't want to commit to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm a commitment phobic. Yeah. No, <laughs> hey, look, man, we're, we're gonna we're gonna keep doing this, but it's gonna be random. So, no, it is what it is. Don't expect a schedule or anything consistent. No. If if you see us post on our Instagrams or you see it go on the YouTube, fucking jump in. That's your chance. Yeah. Be pay attention to our to our, our, our stories. Our stories. So you know when we're Thomas, gonna could you put time. our Instagram links in the uh, in the yeah. Cheers, mate. And cool. uh, yeah, that's that's how we're gonna do this. If we have a friend in town. Yeah. Maybe they'll be in the couch with us. Yeah. Brandon Carter, get your ass to Midtown. Let's go, G. Hey, you might even see a Tate in here, bro. Grape juice, alcohol free, yeah. Brandon. So that's how we're going to do this. Uh, boom. Victor, should I join the war room if I'm a typical nine to five worker? Does that matter? I just feel like I will be walking in empty handed. Here's the thing about the war room, man. Like, the war room ain't about it's 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 a two way street. Like you can come in and add value, or you could come in and absorb and once create value for yourself, once you've you created value for yourself, then you can add value for the new members. Man, it's not this case of like if you can afford to be in the war room, then then you should be joining. Man, like there's no reason why you should feel like if you're just a nine to five guy, you shouldn't be there because you're gonna learn as a nine to five guy. You're going to learn how to not be a nine to five guy by paying attention to the dudes who aren't, right? 
And I don't think there's any, look, for the record, I don't think there's anything wrong being a nine to five guy. You know, I, I think more more millionaires are made out of people that work for companies and guys that go do it on their own. Mm. Mm. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We have a lot of corporate guys in the world, mm. guys that have done very, very, very well for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you right fucking now, the war room is way more than entrepreneurship. The war room could save you the entire check you make from that company just by you, not not by you making a, an advance, just by the landmines that you will not step on because yeah. of the war room. Yeah, man. So, look, man, if you're interested in the war room, DM me or DM Sterling, whoever you like more. Uh, I don't really give a shit. But uh, let's talk about that deeper, man, because... You know, I don't think having a job is a bad thing. If somebody were if somebody were to tell me tomorrow, hey, listen, I know you make this much with your companies and your real estate and all these other things, but I can pay you three, four X that. And and, you know, you have also have a certain level of freedom. Then I'd be like, OK, cool. Let's do that. I'll close my businesses, pay me and I will still be in the world. So mm. what's the point? So uh, having a nine to five job has nothing to do with being a work. Go. Thank you for super chat. I'm 26 working in tech sales, but I don't feel like I'm doing enough. I'd like to learn the right skills to generate high income. Where would you guys recommend to start? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, jump in the link in the description down below and go and touch Hustles University. Yeah, just join mine, not Sterling's. <laughs> Join mine, not Justin. The truth is, we don't give a fuck. <laughs> we all, don't care. It's all the same thing. But adding complementary skills, right? I, I had this conversation recently. And it was like, Let me splash. <laughs> go take a piece. Do it in your bathroom. We've been one hour, 16 minutes, 12 seconds. That's how long Justin lasted before he had to take a piss. <laughs> Let the record be known, everybody, okay? So I had this conversation recently and was like the idea of pursuing your passion is a fucking terrible idea. Like this, the advice of pursuing your passion is absolute trash. Here's the way I was taught to look at your goals, your passions, what you could do to make money, right? Two, if you know what a Venn diagram is, right? two intersecting circles, right? One circle is all the things I'm actually good at and I have a competency in my skills. These, this is one circle. The second circle is what does the world actually value and pay money for? That's the second circle. So we have two intersecting circles and this section in the middle is what you should focus on where those two things overlap and interact, okay, I'm good at, for, for me personally, okay, I'm good at laying pipe. I'm exceptionally good at teaching how to lay pipe. Oh, men kind of value knowing how to dick their girl down better. Men value how to avoid performance anxiety. Men, uh, men value how to avoid erectile dysfunction. Okay, now we have an intersection of some kind. So I can actually communicate with people and we can make some money, right? There's an overlap between my skills and what the world wants. Super, super important. So if you want to learn how to make more money and increase your income, get into HU, links in the description, and you can start to add all these different things to your skill sets. Does that make sense? Like, you're no longer just just a tech guy. Now you're a guy who understands affiliate marketing and tech. Now you're a guy who understands affiliate marketing and tech and crypto. Does that make sense? Now you're a guy who does all these things combined. And if you can take those varied skill sets and combine them and then pitch them to somebody, that's super, super bad. Yeah, I would add on to that a little bit because um, I've been listening to you on me. Uh, <laughs> I think learning them enough to understand them and then hiring is super important and then finding the thing you're good at. And if you're if you're good at sales, I think sales makes the world go around. So yeah, I would um, ask yourself, if you have an energy for sales, then that is not a bad 
Mm-mm. a bad thing to get super, super, super good at because one thing that is in my reality is that I'm not just selling to customers, but I'm selling to talent. Every day, mm-hmm. I have to sell people that come to work for me on the fact that I'm the best choice or the best decision they can make for themselves and their family. And I have to convince them so much so that they go home to their wife and say, listen, baby, working for this company is the best thing that we can do as a team. Mm. So if you do have a passion for sales, I would continue that. Learn what you need to learn as you hire and grow people so you don't get famous by your own employees. But uh, sales is a really good thing to know and understanding every part of the business. Uh, in addition, like Sterling was talking about, is, is very important. That way you can you can have honest conversations with them. So that's my advice. All right. Danny Arnold, good to see you again, my friend. Why is it when you send super chats from an iPhone, it always it's one cent short in the dollar? Lols, here's a little something for the cookie jar. My man, dollar signs, dollar signs. Thank you. Danny, nice. you've been here Thanks, for like Danny. forever. Thank you, Danny. I appreciate your support for the entire channel. You've been here from, from literally from day one. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Oh, the shoes are off. Finally. One shoe. One shoe. Oh, <laughs> literally only know, one shoe is off. You're getting a fucking blister, bro. My ass <laughs> tore up, bro. All right. From my man, Asian Thomas. This is Asian Thomas here from Canada. I learned more within a month of hate you than I did two years as a business student. Oh, dude, I believe that. That's, that doesn't surprise me at all. It Listen. made me realize I was work. I was wasting time, and so I dropped out. So... Anyone watching, Thomas works with me here. I call I call him Asian Thomas because we have Caucasian Thomas so, turbo, yeah. over here who's like turbo racist. Because <laughs> I'm a racist guy. He's Asian Thomas. He's clearly because no because Caucasian Thomas came first. For any Asians out so, there. So no, if if Story Asian if Asian only. Thomas no wait, wait, wait. if Asian Thomas had come first, if I'd employed Asian Thomas first. Then he will be known as Caucasian Thomas. Really? That's the difference. Would you? I wouldn't. I'd still call him Asian. <laughs> Racist! <laughs> Cancel him! <laughs> I would, bro. I'm American. Everybody, hey, He's hey, from the deep south. Everybody's got a bow to the fucking red, white, and blue, bro. Fuck it. <laughs> I love that. So, uh, yeah. So, Sterling's super racist because he calls this guy Asian Thomas and he doesn't want to go to Asia to pick up chicks. Just the, I'm not into Asian girls. That's right. Me neither. That's why I don't go to Asia. Me neither, but I called it first. You're racist. Next question. <laughs> Love you, Thomas. <laughs> he does actually super like Asian Thomas. He talks about him all the time. Okay, yeah. where's this Asian Thomas guy? Canada. Alberta. Which is weird. Asian Thomas. Get the fuck out of Canada. Yeah. A Boogie. Hey, Justin, I'm an architectural design an architectural designer going back to grad school to get my master's in architecture and MBA. Yeah. Any advice for future architects? Good to see you again, Sterling. Uh, I'm the guy with the pink suit from Emily's Hot Cock Hot Duke. Ah, oh, hey, mate. Hey, Do you know this guy? Yeah, a bit of Paul. Nice, badass. It might hear my. Well, any advice for what? Any advice for future architect? For a- advice for a future architect. <laughs> I'm not an architect. I deal with architects a lot. Uh, I would I would tell you that I don't particularly agree with you going to grad school and getting an MBA. I think you can get your MBA in real life. There's nothing that an MBA can teach you that uh, real life can't. As an architect, um, I think it's like anything else. I think that you need to be as good as you can at what you do, and you need to network your fucking ass off and get clients, bro. Uh, you have one of the coolest jobs in the world. If if I could live multiple other lives, architect would be one of them. I'd really want to. I'd really want to like see how I could take my creativity and my systems and understanding of you know construction and buildings to to another place as an architect. I think it's a super cool career. I think you can leave your mark on the fucking world being an architect. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't get lost because you have to understand that being a C student uh in the classroom and being an a player in the real world are mm. two completely different things man mm-hmm. so if i were you and and i know it's going to hurt for me to say this i would drop out of every class you're in and know that you're going to get paid back 10x by not wasting your time in school go 
go out there and be the best architect you can be, bro. Network with all the big players. And uh, let's let's do one together somewhere. Like maybe maybe before you drop out, utilize your lecturers and their contacts. Yeah, but the professors, bro, they don't know shit. They might. If they have one contact, yeah. if they have one contact that he can actually get in with, then he actually has a head head start, right? Yeah, but he's gonna pay thirty grand to do it. No, no, no. Like he's he's like he's in right now. He's paid I love the bill. fact that so he can we, quit we and they can openly do that. debate. That I means love we this. love you guys. Like we're not going to give you some cookie, cookie cutter response. That's scripted. yeah. I would get out of NBA and arc and anything. Oh, past. I, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. I would get out of it. I would get but out. what I'm saying is on the way out. I'd get yeah, that on plug, the way out. Get do that G, on the way plug, out. Yeah. Grab every contact you possibly can yeah. from your lecturers because they probably do know at least somebody in the real world, mm -hmm. right? And then you slip those motherfuckers your resume. You pitch yeah. them. You fucking make sure you follow them. Like you do that pitching. So you can then get out. Yeah, if you've That's already graduated, bro, I would turn up to every fucking architectural firm around and give him a resume. Yeah, I would. Well, he's going to he's going to grad school, so he's already he's still he's already graduated, bro. No, I'm grad school. Oh, it's That's America. America is really different. He already has bachelor's, bro. Oh, okay. So do it, G. Mm. Yeah. Write that spec book Woo. that I hate. Joe took your SDE course. Thank you very much. They should teach it in schools. Thank you. So, thank you so much. Man. They're never going to teach this shit in school. No, they're not going to teach it in schools because it's too real. Is there anything you'd add to it? You may have forgot to cover. Yes, I'm going to be adding a couple of uh, new like uploads to it recently on like threesome stuff and a few other things. So, how to handle a man's taint. <laughs> but thank you, Joe. I really appreciate this. Uh, and I, you know, you know what's funny is that this this comment here, they should teach my when he says my SDE course, he's referring to my sexual dominance escalation course, course. course, yeah, which is badass by the way. <laughs> he says, I have a copy. "You are not the first person to say they should teach this in school." And to me, that's humbling and tragic at the same time. And it tells you that modern like sex education right in schools has nothing to do with sex it does not teach you no how to it doesn't teach you one like how men and women actually interact it doesn't teach you how to be good in bed which is what it should actually try to teach men if i'm being honest like sex education shouldn't, sex education in schools is cons it, it, it's all about it's economy con contraception it's yeah, it's all it's all about scaring you about STDs, man, and getting you set up for big pharma. Which is, and it makes you want all STDs are not real. All, all sex education tries to do, which on that point, yeah, with making you afraid of STDs, yeah, is it tries to make you compliant. Yep. It tries to make you a slave. It tries to make you plug into the pharmaceutical system. Yep. Right. I'm not saying I'm not gonna say STDs. I'm not saying don't wrap up. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say wrap up. <laughs> I'm not saying don't. <laughs> but it's it's deliberately engineered in a certain yeah. way. And it's important to understand that. It's a big scary because it ain't they teach you to you in junior high and show you a bunch of dicks that are like like blistered. Like it's dude, like it ain't gay. it ain't it's not oh, hang on. I think John Ox is here with more wine. Hey, oh. While he's doing this, let me just go back to Sterling. Sterling is the Set best teacher of, of sex in the world. He more wine. Woo! Shut up, Sterling. He he genuinely. I sit here and I watch him put hours into making not only making sure the videos come out correctly on his channel, but making sure the orders there that he's there for guys. He's talking them through dilemmas that they actually have in the bedroom. Sterling is the world's best sex teacher. And, and it comes from a place of not him flexing, but it's more like, you know, like big brother in the bedroom. Like, yo, I'm, I'm here for you, bro. This is what's happening. This is how you get around it. This is what you do with it. Uh, so if you're not following Sterling, yeah, first of all, you, you should. And then second of all, I don't think you're going to find a person that works harder on their channel to make sure that they actually give genuine value to you that you can directly use in real life. So go follow his channel. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Sterling myself as an individual, but I do follow his channel. So, 
Uh, do, do that for sure. <laughs> All right, Matthew Beck. Hello, sir. How did you initially get over anxiety from taking your own path when you started? I'm 20 and a little intimidated. Can I take this? Oh, yeah, you do it. Yeah, bro. Uh, but before you do it, Ooh. wine night. This is the best idea on the planet that's ever happened. Okay, listen, bro. You're 20 years old. Uh, I'm going to make an assumption because you're 20 that you don't have a wife or kids. You have nothing to lose, bro. You literally, literally, bro, nothing. could start to build your own career in your own way. And you have no risk. You could fail 30 fucking times and Raymond noodles taste the same every time, bro. In fact, a part of me super misses being broke. <laughs> Dude, I miss, I miss being broke so bad. You know what I miss? I miss toasted cheese sandwiches. Yeah, bro. Like, I actually miss them because it's all I ate. But I was broke as fuck. Oh. Dude, what is this actual question? Hello, sir. How did you literally... How do you get over the anxiety of taking your own part? Like, There's no fucking anxiety, bro. <laughs> you're 20 years old. No girl wants to fuck you unless you're a Chad. All you have to do. Look, keep going. Keep going. All you have no, to stop, fucking keep going. do is learn how to be valuable to other men. It's That's your so only fucking simple. job, G. You're in a better position than the architect guy. Like, you're not even going to school, bro. Just go be valuable to other men. Simple. That's all you have to do. So simple. Go learn how to do something that other men don't know how to do and they need you for. And it's fucking game over. Do that in your fitness. And I promise you, you will trip over pussy. You will trip over it. You'll be like, like, I'm going to do my thing. I'm (laughs) going to build my own business. Or I'm going to be really good at what I do so somebody can give me a really good job. I'm going to be in shape. Right, and I'm gonna have a little bit of style, and you're gonna be like, "Oh wait, pussy, Boop. you have pussy. to stiff arm oh, shit out pussy. of the way. Uh, like, uh. dude, dude, <laughs> twenty years old, bro. Look, you have so much ahead of you. You have so much ahead of you. Join the war room, the first chance you get, so you don't well, step on any landmines. First of all, first of all, like dude, the very the fact that you have, we didn't have bro, us. Twenty years old, bro. Like we went like thirty five and thirty six, yeah. respectively. We didn't have None this growing up if I at all. Shit at twenty, I'd be worth Jesus fucking. I'd be worth fifty m. Jesus Christ, man. One, I'll, I'm gonna give you a story um, on this point. It's, just, it's, it's, it's very important. So, check me. I can't. I can't even move the king like that. It's a legal move. So, I had a, a good friend of mine. He's no longer a friend, really. John Ox is here. John Ox in the building. What's John up, baby? John Ox is in the building I with some wine. Wait, wait, wait. What's the chords? What's the chords? What's the chords? Yo, yo, yo. Come, yeah, yeah. Come, put your head in the... Come, never, never, come, come your, say hello. Come say hello. Come say hello. Come get a drink. John Ox. Ah, uh, he bought wine. Good man. Sully, Good man. War Room G coming in live. Warm G. Good. You think What's y'all can hang out on? with us? Not, not no, you're going to turn on us now. You're fucked. Probably not. <laughs> now you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. John Ox in the building. Anyway. John Ox the man. Get the fuck out of here, John. Yeah, this is what I'm doing. I'm telling John I'm just yelling. touched my dick. I'm telling you. <laughs> Zach, yo. You want some wine? This wine right here. Go right ahead, my friend. Get some of that. Glasses are in this cupboard here. Yeah. Avoid all the wires. How many people are on right now? 158. No shit. What's Live up, right now. Nice. While I'm halfway through a story. Anyway. So I had a friend back in Australia when I made my first ever hey. business. And he used to work, or well, he still works actually for the government. He has a government job. Cushy, secure, renewed every year. Once you're in, you're never out. Can't get fired, right? So he adopted this mentality. And when I created my business for the first time, he said to me, man, is the words verbatim word like, man, I wish I could take the kind of risk that you took to create a business. And I thought about that for a second. And I'm like, where's 
where's the actual risk? Think about it this way, right? So I'm a new business, completely fresh, selling it from nothing, right? <laughs> you did, not, did not do this with me. <laughs> went right past the camera, but thank you anyway. <laughs> so here's the, where's the risk? What, what are you doing, Thomas? Okay, I get you. <laughs> he's trying to give you, he's giving John Ox a seat. Anyway, more importantly, let me finish this story. So the point is, like, where is the risk? I'm starting a business from scratch. I'm in my early 20s. I have no debt because I'm not a dumbass. I don't have any kids because I'm not a dumbass. So I could try this thing. And if it works out, then I fucking win. And I'm exactly where I want to be. Yeah. Or I could try this thing and it fails. And then I know exactly what to not do the next time I try a business. So it's only win. There's only a plus side. There's only like success or learning so why wouldn't i fucking try it i i don't understand the downside there's literally yeah. no downside yeah, and that's why i'm super big and staying in the same fight because if you, let's say you go into business a and you take you take the blows of that business if you change careers you're going to go into another industry and take the punches mm. so instead of and so but if you stay in the same industry you see the punches coming so it's like slip duck boom boom like you get your licks in man so like i'm super big on staying in the same industry especially in brick and mortar if you're already in brick and mortar then then you can stay in it because every like see how common it is for a guy to say that he's a copywriter in here like everybody's going to digital money you know and so if you're in a brick and mortar business and you can actually make money uh without the internet and you take some licks you might be the only dude in that fight later he's black and i'm white what are you being racist about now? No, because that's the saucy order. Uh -huh. So they food? have to check the ID. But the ID is me and I'm white and he's black. Uh, so it's hilarious. <laughs> which further which further confirms my point that Sterling is an Australian racist. <laughs> it's funny. It's hilarious. There's a black guy giving true? giving her no, it's more booze. Oh. I don't like keto the booze because I didn't think Thomas would succeed. And Thomas I didn't think he would succeed. So now we have triple booze. We have order infinite wine for wine. Order though. a bunch of chicken and Caesar salad. Shawarma. Shawarma. Kebab. Shaved kebab shawarma. Okay. okay so I don't know. What were we well, that about? answers the question. I right. did answer the question. For Victor. Victor Jimenez. Thank you. I DM'd uh, Jay Waller on Instagram. I would appreciate more insight about the war room. We've got it. Uh, Sterling, why don't you like Asian girls? Because they're androgynous. They, they, they you look. Can't tell if they're a boy or a girl. Because Asian girls aren't. I'm, I'm, this is the most racist thing I'm going to say ever on flat. Bro. They don't look like women. Yeah. They don't look like women. Yeah. They look androgynous. I can't. Is that a yeah. woman? A man? Is like, it Pat? Like, like no Asian Asian girls, no tits, no ass. Yeah. Where's the femininity? Yeah. I don't get the attraction to Asian chicks. Most racist thing you'll ever hear me say. I don't even think that's racist. It's just factual. What did he ask me? Uh, he DM'd you on IG. Yeah, dude, you. DM me tonight. I'll, I'll message you after this. Actually, just DM me right now so it's in my inbox. All right, Garrett. I moved to HU. Money is great and all, but I think about impact uh, often. At what point? It, uh, at what point, is, if there is one, do you start to shift gears and aim towards the big picture? Well, what is I'll the this. what's the big picture? Like money is the like. Yeah. Have a path, man. Like yeah. have listen, bro. An end goal. That's the listen, bro. Until you can get to a place in your life where you can take care of that small group of people that you really love, that family, mm. then you don't have any business worrying about anything but making paper. Mm -hmm. and you'll find this crazy 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 amount of fulfillment from taking care of those that you love so i i wouldn't i wouldn't worry very much about 
like giving back or being a tree hugger or being on some of like being on some of this like philanthropy stuff, bro. Because I'll be honest with you, a lot a lot of the a lot of the nonprofits are full of shit. And one thing that I enjoy more than anything in my life is like taking a young guy and taking him shopping and get him get him, you know, suited up. Yeah, or, suit him up. Yeah. Or like if I go somewhere and I want to help somebody, you know, like paying for their dinner or somebody that is an extended part of my family. I found out uh, not too long ago that somebody I really care about, their mother was in a position where their their fence got fucked up. The, the rake on their house got fucked up. I called a dude that owed that owed me from a job and he called them. He's like, hey, I can't tell you where this is coming from, but I'm going to take care of that whole fence, the whole side of the house, cost free to you. And it's just over with, done, bang, out the door. So like, I wouldn't so much worry about like giving back. Because a lot of those people that are giving back on a big scale are most often full of shit. And I want to I wanna give to people that I love and care about. You know, mm-hmm. not some motherfucker I don't know that might not spit on me if I was on fire, man. So make that money first, bro, and then care about the people directly close to you. Should be a short list, less than a handful, and you'll find all the fulfillment you'll ever need in the world. Mm-hmm. So that's the advice I would give you on that. Yeah. Dude, fuck the big picture. What about your picture? Like your picture is the big picture. Like, yeah, because you can't. You're not in a position. Nobody's in a position. <sighs> like you can't change the world unless. You have money. Yeah. You really can't. You really can't, bro. So you're like, talking about shit before it's even time. Yeah. And I think a lot of young people make this mistake. Well, I think they listen to all the bullshit on the internet. Yeah. Bro. Which is why. You got a, bu- like, you got you a bunch of people like talking all this shit like they're good people. Those people, most often the people, it's like church people. The people <laughs> that tell you they're religious are the ones. I wouldn't know about that. Yeah, I would. And the, the <laughs> people that tell you they're religious and they're doing it for God or in like helping people find their way to God, they're most often the ones that are full of shit, bro. So, look, man, I, I actually made a YouTube video about this. It said it was, it was about fuck your passion. Dude, bro, fuck your passion, bro. Mm-hmm. Can you take care of your, your wife, your kids, your family? Mm-hmm. And your family is not the people that you're related to. It's the people that you align with. John Ox is my family. Mm-hmm. Sterling is my family. Andrew Tristan, the Satorial Shooter. Which uh, y'all need to follow on Instagram, the Satorial Shooter. Don't create a fake Instagram account for it. Yeah, is my family. <laughs> and uh, Thomas is my family. Little homo. Thomas is a fact. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Whoops. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> before you can handle that, I don't even think it's time, bro. <laughs> like, you know, I, I don't think it's even time to worry about that, man. I, I would, you know, I would I would put those people first because most people that think they have a bunch of friends don't have any. They don't have friends, man. They have acquaintances. They have people who are yeah. using them. They have yeah. people who are trying to somehow it's a like, weather fan, bro. Man, like network through them. They don't actually have real yeah. friends. Like real friends is are so hard to come by. So why do you think? Why do you think that Justin and I immediately moved in together? It didn't take long. We knew each other. We met each other like three times, right? And then we immediately moved in together. <laughs> it's because of the alignment of values. We under, we've, we've been around each other enough yeah. to understand that we had those values aligned. And more importantly, it's because this, that is so fucking rare. Super, super duper rare. Thomas is interrupting the stream like a dickhead. Thomas, what are you, what are you doing? Asking? Oh, just that. Uh... Thomas, uh, oh, bro. Joshua, it's, it's in the code book. Yeah. gentlemen, what is your, your <laughs> you'll love this, what is your go-to scotch? Why is it so gentleman bad? Jay, bro, gentleman gen- Jay is the go-to Jay. scotch. Bro, you know, Ro- me and Rolo, we're going to come out with gentleman Jay. If you want, <laughs> look, oh, okay, I got one for look. you. If you want to see the whiskey brand, gentleman Jay come out. Blow up Rolo Tomasi's Instagram. Yeah. Hit right up now. Rolo Tomasi right, right. now. When on is IG, Gentleman J coming out? And just say, when is Gentleman J coming yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. Simple. 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 That's the answer to your question. Bam. What is his handle? Like Rollers? Or this Rollers guy? handle. At Rational Man. At Rational Man. At, At Rational Man. At Rational Man. Where is Gentleman J? Where is it? When is Gentleman J coming out? Ghost of the West. I'm currently learning to specialize... Yeah, you can link, link Rolo. Yeah, right drop now. Rolo. Yeah. yeah, 
We're going to drop you a link. Blow yeah. Rolo's shit up. <laughs> and hit him up with that question. Gentleman Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently learning specialized in UX copywriting websites and emails. I will hit your legs up when I'm ready to help. Oh, great. Thank Thanks, you. G. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, G. Next Appreciate question. It. Appreciate it. FYO, FYI, Audible and podcasts just find them better use of time in the gym, work, so house all downtime. Thank you. Cheers. All right, cool. Yeah. Dude, we, we somehow we got through all of the super chats. I'll be damned. Fuck me running. Let's go to Instagram. Yeah. I'm not done. I, I ain't, I ain't done. I ain't fucking done. Dude, it's wine night. I'm still, it's wine night. It's wine night, man. John Ox. Do you think I'm done? Go. Do you I think I'm done? never thought you're done. I'm not done. Come done. on, John. Go. What's going on? Let's fucking Shit. jump back into Instagram. Yeah, this is a blessing to the people. Mate. The people Mate. know. Let's start, let's find a good question here, too. Right. Ooh. I can't answer that. <laughs> this is a funny question. Okay, I'm gonna ask it. I'm gonna answer this question purely because it's funny. From uh, the Miami guy, how to get a milf with some paper? What? I don't understand the question. How do you get a milf who's got who's cash? Got money? So you can be a sugar daddy, a sugar baby. As a dude, this dude's trying to be a sugar baby. Yeah, this is one of my questions. Awesome. It's actually a good question because I've had a few people ask this question. How do you become a sugar baby as a dude? I personally wonder. To a milf, right? Like, how is this possible? Well, first of all, you lay the fucking pipe properly with a milf. One hundred. One hundred. Duh. Oh, I, That's bro. the first step. Like, listen, I listen. I, I will the look. King of laying pipe. I'm gonna. How do I lay the pipe well? John Ox, deep super chat. <laughs> if you want us <laughs> to answer your question, super. I'm gonna answer that though. This, this, is very, this is very important. This is very important. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of Columbia right now. A little, a little bit. Should of, we put the video up? We can. We can. We can. I, I can do that. Like we right can. now. I can totally yeah. do do right the. Uh, Okay. Well, keep talking while I do the flex. So, so well, I flex on everybody. One thing, <laughs> one thing that we love to tell the young guys is to, when you go on your dating app, do not stop it at at twenty four. Oh if, God. If, if I am sub twenty five years old, I'm telling you right now, I am going eighteen to forty five minimum. Uh, as, a me, young, as a young, as a man. young guy, let young me tell man. you something about older ladies. Woo. Old ladies have snacks, bro. They got food at their snacks. house. All you, this is what you have to do. You have to show up. <laughs> and when I say go hard in the paint, I mean I'm trying to win championships. You leave it all on the fucking field, bro. You fucking – you leave it all on the field, bro. You win championships. You hit that shit as hard as you can for as long as you can, and I promise you you'll lay there, and while you're catching your breath, once she catches herself, she will be making you goodies, bro. Mm -hmm. She doesn't expect you to pay the mortgage. She has a job. If you're a young guy in college or you're just a young guy, period, it's a great thing to do because you're not going to get hit with this ultimatum conversation. Mm -hmm. None of that bullshit. Set your shit from, and we said this on another video in Tahoe, we did. Set your shit from 18 to 45. <laughs> okay. Coming in with some gangster rap. <laughs> You might just play this on mute, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Keep talking. Play, okay. Play, play. Are you playing it now? Let me remember. Share. Oh, a video file. What time is it? Yeah. Oh, I'm actually very technically competent. It's good, bro. But no, bitch, nigga. I'm fucking. But I'm full of, also full of wine. <sighs> so, look. Okay. Let's switch up this situation. Bam. Ah, oh, much better. Bam. Okay. So, <laughs> this is... Why is John Ox cuddling up Thomas? Why are they cuddling? Why, John cuddling? why are you guys John, cuddling? John and Thomas are... Why are you guys cuddling? <laughs> this is the best wine night ever. Who let the angry black guy in? Who, who invited the black guy? <laughs> What's going on, John? I'll throw you off the fucking balcony. I don't give a fuck. They call it hate crime all they want. I love John. 
John has actually <laughs> stayed in my house for over, uh, over John a month. John is probably going to sleep on this couch. In Louisiana. He John is probably sleeping in Louisiana. Louisiana. More importantly. Sterling flexing the gangster rap. No. I want, no. Uh, that works. That works. Cool. All right. Cool. So we're still, look. Okay. So. A little sneak peek. Co- uh, some context to the video. Because we were originally going to drop this on Fresh and Fit. We were. That was the plan. We still should. We should make our wait. And we, we should. <sighs> do we? I think we should make them wait, bro. Yeah. Yeah, fuck y'all. See y'all on Fresh and Fit. Remove. Sorry, Sorry. guys. Sorry, guys. Gotcha. Sorry, guys. But look. If you want to see us on Fresh and Fit. Hit up Fresh and Fit. Say blow get, up Myron. Get Sterling and Justin. Blow up, blow up Myron and Fresh. On a... Our, our, Fuck look, up. our whole show is about like blowing people's inboxes up. <laughs> well, look, if we if they weren't our friends and we didn't love them, we wouldn't do it. They're actually our friends. So, what is it? Unplug fit? Yeah. Hey, will you put mine on Instagram? And in at like, Fresh and, like, and say, hey, fuck off. Fuck off. Stop making out with We're the tongues. literally sitting here talking about you two fucking assholes. <laughs> two bros. Being so homoerotic. Hey, how do I get to the question? You go boop. Sterling teaching me stuff all the time. No, uh, we go bang, 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 bang. All right, questions. Right, cool. <sighs> What's gonna be the name of your boat? We the already bang have- boat. No, 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 no. We have a new name. No, Tristan named our boat. We did the group boat, the friendship oh, circle the boat. Friendship circle. But you can't tell everybody. We can't tell them. But Tristan already named the yacht, the mega yacht. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. It's not a boat. It's a mega yacht. Anybody that joins the war room within the next 24 hours, I'll give you the name of the boat. And the first time we go on it, you're invited. (laughs) On the yacht. First time we go, you're invited. You know my code, bro. Hmm. Hit me up on Instagram, Jay Waller Seven. I literally, I'll put you on the boat with a bunch of whoopies. How to find a milk? Same question. How to find a milk? How to find a milk paper? Missions and your kind. Okay, this is a good question. How do I create a team like you have? I see you guys have your team, and you're very powerful. But uh, the, that could, okay, uh, that could actually mean two things. It could be, does that mean our inter- could, internal could, team, uh, or does that mean the friendship yeah, circle? Yeah. yeah. So how about you yeah. answer the internal, and I'll answer the friendship circle. So how do you even build that? All right, cool. Well, you build that by having standards, being a man of integrity, being a man who has, has his shit together. <laughs> money muscles like, like not being a slob and then you seek out other guys like that that's it, and it's not it's not fucking easy but on twitter on twitter if i'm being honest twitter and youtube are actually places you can kind of go to find people like this and then what you need to do is in person vet them because I fucking guarantee you, the first time that Andrew and Tristan met me and him, they were judging us because we were judging them too. It was a mutual thing. We were like seeing, okay, was, is this guy the real deal? Is he who he says he is? Like, have standards and then apply them. But you apply them in real life. So you have to actually meet up with guys in real fucking life. That's what I'll say. How about with, when it comes to teams? How do you bet people for your team? Your internal team? It's tough, man. I, I've hired and fired hundreds of guys. What I would say is that first and foremost, intention is everything. If you have intention with an individual, if you, if you know they have intent, then it comes down to can they handle it? Can they do the job? And then you just have to manage them completely emotionlessly. It's, it's about numbers and stats. 
and you can help them get there and you can see if they're on the way. Because if they have intention, they will make sure they get themselves on the way to competency fully. You might be able to hire somebody with full competency and intent. I do think that's hard to come by. Uh, so intentions first, the ability to create competency is is right after that. And then um, and then making sure that, you know, you're a good leader. And that's a whole nother conversation that I like it would take too long to talk through. But finding people with intention that can have an energy to create a competent. And, and again, I want to emphasize they have an energy to create a competence in something that you yourself do not have an energy for. That's how you build a team. All right. Zal, in the super chat, thank you. I'm a 22 year old virgin and I'm very focused on my purpose, which is becoming a dentist. Six foot two, confident and handsome, but I feel left behind in the game zone of life with women. Dude, yeah. any recommendations? Dude, you're, you're already starting with cheat codes. If you're six foot two, if you're actually handsome and you're actually a dentist, you know that you realize you're already in like the top 1% of men on the planet. Especially if you're in the West. Yeah, right? dude like you just needs to join a war room, bro. At 22 years old. Okay, yeah. okay. 20 year old. If you're 22 and you're a virgin, fine. Like, I ain't going to judge you for that. I am. <laughs> no, I am. I am, bro. Thing is, I am. But I'm you sorry, to, bro. But how does he, how does he correct that? How does he handsome, fix them? And you're, 20, and you're 22 and you didn't have sex by at least 17. You're fucking weird somehow. Well, that's the question. You would have to refuse pussy. I'm sorry. Bro. How does he fix that? How does he fix it? I, dude, honestly, I think you should join the war room. And I'm not just, I'm not just telling you that. Like, I genuinely believe that. If you're 22, six foot two, and actually handsome, and you have never slept with a woman, then I do think you should join the war room, bro. What's he missing? What's he missing? What, what the war he's autistic, bro. What, what the war room is going to I'm sorry, but he's bro, all, being six two and handsome. If you're, if you're six, if you're fuck, six, fuck being a dentist, you don't yeah. trip over pussy. If you're six, six two and handsome, if you're six two and handsome, then you're you're deaf, fucking something, and you're right? not getting laid. You're you're autistic, definitely bro. autistic. You're autistic, bro. There's some problem. No, no, no. I'm serious. I like, don't mean that disrespectfully. We can some, fix your autism. There's something wrong in there's the way you interact right. with people. No, yeah, it's true. I am going that, that, that is actually true. It's the war room. Like left behind the game. Of, okay, he says, "I feel left behind in the games and alive." Get out. Leave your laptop. Go to a bar. Go to a club. Go on the streets. I don't know where you live. Talk first. Step one. Actually, talk to strangers. No, that's that's genuine advice because that will actually make you more social. It'll make you better, dude. That hey, bro, will make you way please more. Please message me on Instagram right now. I want to see. I want to see what you look like. This we, we, don't actually, seven, we don't know what he actually. He says. No, he's, message me on he Instagram. Says J Waller Seven. Message handsome. me right now. I am waiting. He might not actually be handsome, bro. If he's six two and just gives a fuck at all. Game over. Fuck it all. Game over. Game over. Like you'd have to be fucking retarded. All right, somebody just DM'd Rollo. Like turbo ugly. Tips for finding forty. No, okay. Fuck it. Next question. Tips for finding forty plus women with money on swinger sites, dude. Dude. Dude, I'm not answering this for two bucks. <laughs> One sentence answer. <laughs> Set your dating apps to 40 plus. Yeah, you should. You should always do that's that. That's the answer. That's, that's what you should be doing. Yeah, because you're going to run across those profiles. They're like... If you're if wife, you're a young, attractive man wife, yeah. and you want older women to like for moose... That's what that last dude should do. 22. Set your seat to 45, bro. <laughs> See this one? I'm not going to put it on the screen. You guys don't like Asian girls. <laughs> 
Bro, we no. don't. No, it's that's true. not true. It's not completely true. Is that well, it's like eighty percent? Like, you would have ninety percent true. Complete fucking banger <laughs> for me to like you if you're Asian. <laughs> you had to be bad, bro. <laughs> You'd have to be bad, bad. Okay, Johnny for two dollars. How do you all get through life's struggles and bad days, dude? Like, I'll tell you what I do. Man up. Like, this is what I do. I have this thing in my uh, in my notes section on my phone that helps me a lot because I think that fi- having a bad day is super supernatural, mm. and I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm a superhero that doesn't have bad days. So we all I, have bad days. We all have bad days. So what I do, I have this note to myself that's called "Rainy Day." In "Rainy Day" is nothing more than a list and, and a description of all the things I've accomplished in my life and where I am in life, and all I do is select all and hit the speak button to Siri and I'll let Siri read it to me. So um, if you've accomplished anything in your life or you're on the right track, then I would create a file called rainy day. And anytime I was feeling bad, I would just select all and listen to it, man. And if you haven't, if you haven't achieved enough based off what that rainy day uh, note says, then you need to get to fucking work, bro. Yeah. And understand that you're not behind that. It's a part of life. It's a part of life, man. So like what what makes you feel like a life is a struggle? Like Yeah. You, you're gonna in, struggle. In the Western world, we have this fucked up mentality that life should should be easy. Sit for like five seconds and think about the actual experience that your great, 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 great ancestors had. They're in a fucking cave, like struggling for heat, trying to keep the fire alive while someone else is trying to kill something so we can take the fur and stay alive and eat and... Like, yeah. And you're sitting there watching Netflix and sad. I was about to say, bro, you have Netflix. Like, no, I, I don't mean this in a condescending way. I mean, like, because you've grown up a certain way, fine. But you've grown up with a incorrect interpretation of how the real world is. And the real world is brutal. The real world, if all this ended, if all electricity immediately gone, we internet, are. Gone. Immediately gone. What the fuck would you have? For anyone watching this, by the way, what the fuck would you have? You'd have, most of you would have fucking nothing. Which is why it's super important to have brothers, to have connections, have friendship, importance, actual real world meaningful friendships, right? Guys who will actually fucking have your back. Understanding how to keep frame with a woman. (laughs) Understanding how to control, keep frame with a woman. So she will be by your side, yeah. right? Understanding how to fight, yeah. like how to look after yourself. Man, like you, you actually have it much better than you realize, but your frame, the perspective you're putting on the world is off. I hope that makes sense. I think I think what he means is the struggle, the struggle, the internal struggle he's having on where he is versus where he should be. And what all I would tell you, bro, is like burn the boat, man fail a million times mm-hmm. just keep failing bro. Mm. keep failing dude that absolute fail 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 rapidly fail my my first mentor what he told me his his the best advice he gave me fail forward fast yeah do it fast yeah. craig valentine he's on i you can find him on g yeah Fail forward fast. If it hurts and it sucks, you might yep. be on the right path. Too. Yep. Yep. It's really it's true. It's so literally if, if if you're resisting it, remember the compass we talked about before? The compass of resistance. Yep. If you're resisting that, fail forward fast. Fail at that and do it more. Yep. That's, Next that's, question. How you, that's how you go. No, you're doing fine, bro. Shalom. <laughs> He's a dentist swindler. 
Uh, Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> More super chat. All right. Del says, Lamal, I'm not autistic. <laughs> Just used to being a hardcore gamer, aka autistic. autistic. <laughs> not fat either. Oh, oh. Sterling has spilled more wine on this fucking podcast. Come on. We have more wine. The, the rug is ruined, bro. We're paying for that. Fuck the rug. On the way out. <laughs> this, is why we, this is why we never did this podcast. To Tristan Tate. <laughs> more booze. As long as the electronics bro, are okay, at, we're good. We did with this, bro. I don't care. The electronics are okay. The electronics bro, it literally on the okay. floor right now. It looks like we're don't, don't tell them. <laughs> don't tell them about the state of the floor. You need the top. Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, what, what's this guy saying? Right. I messaged you on IG, Justin. My name is... Okay, well, that's basically... Look, Thomas... Someone grab a fucking towel. The cupboard over here is a goddamn towel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is why we never did wine night. Welcome to wine night. <laughs> We didn't do it. Are you this not entertained? Are you not entertained? This is why we didn't do this thing. Well. <laughs> All right, let's keep What's going. What's the question? How, how long have you been a couple? <laughs> well played, sir. We are, cowboy. Thanks for the 10 bucks. Next question. <laughs> Answer. Who's the better chess player? Ooh. We've Ooh. only played chess once. Yeah, we've only played chess once. And you won when I was brand new. Yeah, but he was super new. I was like telling him how to move the pieces. Yeah, so yeah it, it, it was in Baton Rouge. Oh, that's it. <laughs> the, best, the best super chat of the night is this one. The tutorial shooter. <laughs> I don't bring it up. It's probably a good po- spot to wrap it up. Can huh? we finish? We finished, man. Two hours. We finished wine night. Wine night, guys. First ever wine first night. First ever wine night. John Ox is here. We've got John like Ox, infinite war, wine. Got war room in the building. <laughs> By the way, anybody that joins the war room, if you're in the war room and we're doing one of these, you can come live on. come over to the apartment and hang out with us. Unless you're a complete turbo nerd, a dickhead. Yeah, if you're a dickhead, then fuck off. Yeah. But if you're John Ox, like John Ox, should fuck off. Then, then you can come. So, <laughs> all right, well, guys. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Cheers to everybody. And I'm going to hit this end broadcast button in about five, four. Hit the like button. Three, two, one.